Yeah. Man, I gained 10 pounds eating the red and the green M&M, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I so quick with those M&M's. Up today. How you brothers been for the week, man? Oh, we've been, been good. We can't ignore the ratings. I mean, this light skin thing is working for me. And I heard it. Yeah. Yeah. Where do we start? <laughs> yo, 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 yo. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> another week for the brothers from let's chop it up please follow us like us subscribe on facebook youtube and twitter ring the bell subscribe so you get the notifications that we did and you let us a little bit down we were family we're only eight people away from getting the 500 can you help us out just tell a friend to tell a friend we love to support you can you just support us guys we love you all please for that and please any comments you always like the comments the good the bad and the ugly we'll respond to y'all so with that said my brothers from another mother how was your week, my man, Derek? How was the week, my man? Hey, man. The week was uh, beautiful, was uh, slow motion, relaxed, uh, spent time with the family. Um, my oldest is in the Navy. He's doing fantastic. He should be studying for his, um, I think he should be should be testing, actually, for his advancement um, to his next rank. Um, he's been doing well, man, so I'm very optimistic about that. He's moving. Uh, my kids, my middle son, my, my youngest son. Hey, Simone, how you doing? Mm. Um, you know, everybody's doing well. My goddaughter, my, my, my youngest son today was his uh, second day of coding class, uh, online. Um, and my people's, I'm going to start to share that information as well. Um, so if anybody's interested in, in online, you know, you know, lessons for their children, that'll be, that'll be dope. Um, and other than that, man, we've got uh, family and visiting from, from, from out of town. My, my wife's side, uh, fly people from Costa Rica are in town. So, um, nice. you know, so yeah, so we're going to enjoy our little time with them. And, um, and that's what it is, man. You know, and, and, and I'm back with you fellas, man, you know, uh, doing what I love to do, man. Hanging with you. Best, best company I can think of. So, so Derek, what's your favorite Costa Rican uh, meal that your wife makes? Uh, what's, on, what's on the plate for everybody coming to town? Oh, man. Uh, papusos. What is that? Um, so she just made that. It was, um, it's like this, uh, I don't know, it's like some sort of little patty or something, like almost like roti or something with like some lettuce and some other things on it, some beans and all this other stuff on there. Um, slam it, bro, as we used to say. I'm using old school phrase. Slam it. It was slamming. And, um, you know, so that's the first thing that came to my mind. But there's so many, man. So they got some good food in Costa Rica, man. I'm telling you, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, beautiful people too. Pure da vida. <laughs> yeah. My man Rod, my man Mamelo, good on me because I know you eat jello. How was your week, man? <laughs> it was good. It was good. I do want to vouch for um, Derek's wife. I've been to his house for dinner. His wife can burn. It's no joke. I mean, his wife yeah. is an amazing cook. I'm starting to think so. Thank Kelvin, you, I, Kelvin and I wasn't invited, but that's okay. Let's keep going. You know what that's about. You already know that. Right? Look, 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 that's light skin. And then there was a reason. There was a reason. There was a reason you weren't invited, but I'm not going to say what it is. So so I'm nice. Paper bag test. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but um, my week, my week is my week has been good. You know, um, I got an announcement to make. Um. I've been focusing on my health even more, okay. you know, eating right. I'm still going to the gym and stuff like that. And I made a decision for people that know me closely. You know that I smoke cigars. So I'm deciding that I am going to quit smoking cigars. That's tough. Wow. That's tough. Yeah. That yeah. Cigars is good too, man. Wow. Yeah, wow. cigars. Yeah, it's going to be hard, but I'm, I'm going to do it because I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm mentally strong. So I, I can definitely do it. But, um, you know, it's, it's yeah, going to be hard. You might, have to give a, you might have to give up the brown liquor to go with it, though, brother. Well, I don't drink brown. I don't. I don't drink brown liquor. Oh, good. Well, then, yeah, you got a shot at it, then, man. Yeah. I ain't got no shot at all. See, see, <laughs> see, see, he, he, he discriminates even against brown liquor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I only like. Oh, I only like. like right it's got to be. It's got to be clear. You got to yeah. eat the clear stuff. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Rob, Rob, let me ask you a question. How many? How many cigars do you have? If you you quitting today, you must have some left over. I do. I have I have actually a lot left on my humidor, and um my wife. I'll dispose of those for you, man. If you need. No, that's all right, Derek. <laughs> but my wife made a suggestion, but I was kind of a little bit um, you know, a little bit cautious about this suggestion because she suggested that I not quit 
until after I smoked them all. So that made me kind of feel like, is she trying to get closer to this insurance policy or not? <laughs> you know, so I don't know, you know, but she encouraged me to finish them all and then quit. You know, oh. so I don't know. <laughs> Big Sam got to hit on Ron, yeah. y'all. <laughs> nah, she gonna let me do myself in. She gonna say, "No, nah, you keep you keep smoking them cigars, baby." Uh, tequila is my tequila is that kryptonite right there, Maya. I'm telling yeah. you, something. that's my, my daughter, man. She, what the hell are you talking about? Tequila? Sit your ass down, man. I'm talking about tequila, man. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Man, my family is bailing. <laughs> yeah, but I, I made I made the decision after I had the colonoscopy because you know the doctor said to me, she said, "Mr. Mitchell, you smoke, don't you?" And I said, "I said no, I don't smoke. I I'm, I only occasionally smoke cigars." She says, "Well, I don't know how to tell you, but that's smoking." And she said that you're a very healthy, you know, healthy man. You basically should consider quitting. And I'm going to take her advice, and I'm going to quit smoking cigars. Very good. I mean, I mean, ask the doctor if you put marijuana in the middle of that cigar wrapper, is it still? It's, it's still, still smoking. smoking. It's still smoking. D, you yeah. gonna find a way. D, you gonna, gonna find a yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Circumvent the system. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I'm, sorry, but I'm happy for you, brother. Seriously. Yeah, I, yeah. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm taking a journey one day at a time. Yeah, man. What's I mean, up, Kay? Yeah, man. What up? What up? We just got started, baby. We just talking about how how was a week. Um. Yeah. The thing is, like you know, you know, Ryan, my, I lost my father at sixty-two, and that's only ten years from uh, your, your age now. So it's like I'm glad that you're giving up on that now. I wish I, my father would listen to me when I try to tell him. Yeah, you see that shit? I saw you he, did. I saw you saw what he did, did right? I, I wouldn't say smooth, my dude. age earlier. You did it smooth, though. And he it was freaking leaked it. And it yo, yo, that's why, wow. yo, you know that is? That's the dark skin revenge, brother. But no, this, right. is, wow. <laughs> this is why I say it though. God, don't Ron, let the devil use me right now. That's why I say, because Ronnie, you look very good at your age, and I don't have to say no homo. It just really doesn't give my brother the spot. Thank you, D. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Really nice but I still, but you still nice shouldn't have said that. Though. Yeah, nice baby. <laughs> yeah, I saved it like a yeah. goalie and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ronnie's fifty-two years old. That's everybody. Uh, look, knows look, so she gave me some love. She liked, you know, she thought I was cool. See? Yeah, Kelvin, my brother, man. How was your week, my man? Oh man, uh, you know, long week, long week. I, as I told you guys, my aunt passed a couple of weeks ago. Um, so we had her. Sorry to hear that again, yeah, Kelvin. Thank you, man. thank you, brothers. I appreciate it. Yeah, we had a funeral today, and I was her eulogist. So uh, rest in peace to my aunt Joanne Jones. Uh, but it's a beautiful, beautiful ceremony, and um, had a chance to see her two weeks ago. We did as uh, honors uh, celebration, which I recommend everybody to do if you can. So, you know, we had a long day with that, but, um, you know, my cousins and my uncle hanging in there. And um, other than that, man, it's just been really, really long. I mean, it's like we got a second shot at summer. It's it is like 90 degrees today. It's blazing out there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm um, just trying to get ready for some football weather, get ready uh, to transition into the fall, which is one of my favorite times of year, getting ready to go into the holidays and stuff. So, you know, other than that, man, everything was good. Everything was cool, you know. Um, there's a couple of things that's going on with, uh, um, I guess the light skin, dark skin, uh, situation, but we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that later. Outside of that, uh, D, how was your week, man? My week, my week is, uh, rough, bro, with work and everything like that, man. For those who know, like, I work for a large nonprofit and we are part of the emergency rent assistance program trying to get out that two billion New York state got to get, uh, to pay back landlords and tenants back rent up to a year. So if anybody else want to put the number, out there, I'm gonna put it in the chat right now, Jamie, so you can post it across. Did you say two billion with a B? Two billion dollars in New York State. Yeah, I'm a little light. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 you wait. You saying that they let you be in charge of two billion dollars? <laughs> no, 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 no. My brother, wait, wait, Ronnie, okay. I got big. Do, he was like, wait yo, a minute. Wait, what? you're saying, do you have access to two billion dollars? <laughs> no, no, because otherwise we'd have been getting all those chicks for OnlyFans page to have a party. But I'm not okay. <laughs> wait, do you do you know the person that is running the two billion dollars? No, I know a couple of people in HRA, but not they don't have no pull. Like my man, he can't go nowhere. They're going uh, to I'm, trying, I'm trying to get close to that money. Yeah, I'm so the, you on that, Rob. But, yeah, you know. for the number for the phone number for people that's interested in it, it's called the Emergency mm -hmm. Rental Assistance Program. It's uh 929. That's through us for Good Shepherd 525. There you go, Jamie. Uh 2248. And that's for the only for the uh for New York, so anybody that's listened to this thing, look at the, go to your uh, local website to so your uh, state, state communications, figure out, and just type in emergency rental assistance program for whatever state that you are in, 
and they should be able to locate you, uh, help you out there. Nice. So, yeah, and then if anybody else that needs help with, like, rent, I'm doing rental assistance called Helping Hands. Be helping our pay back back rent, man. That's a headache. You know, people back utility bills up to two grand. Food vouchers depends on size of family. It's eight hundred dollars. Furniture stuff like that. If you need to get at me, hit us up on YouTube, and I and Jamie will provide you my email address so you can reach me if you need anybody needs help with that. Nice. Yeah, so nice. that's about it, man. Just a rough week, man. Helping people's hard job, brother. It is a hard job. You, D, I'm very, <laughs> very proud of you. I'm proud of you, D, for what you do, especially for our people. Let me tell you this, people have been coming at me on the show saying, Kelvin, you are very critical of our community, that you just come across with stories that are, you know, bad for our community, and you just really are critical of our people. And people have been saying that to me. Anyway, everybody else good? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going I'm to say it for Calvin. Fuck him. <laughs> As my man Bobby Burr said, yeah. God made him, God damn him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yo, you you guys got um child support assistance over there too? Oh man, I wish it's a it's another number. I can't think of hand. I could probably help people out with that joint, man. Yo, that's I, know, yeah. I know some brothers that need help with that. No, it's a good idea that when somebody come to try to get it, that's where they find them. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the people talking about. This is the people talking about when they talk about you, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, mm. man. So uh yeah, Kelvin, anything else, man, on your mind, brother? Yeah, I got a little pet peeve I got to talk about. And I'm going to tell you. Me. First of all, you know I live in the land of inconsideration. Okay? <laughs> and so um, I just want to say, and I'm not talking about any particular community, okay? I'm just saying in my community, all right, I guess I am talking about a particular community. In my community, have you ever experienced when you're trying to drive down the street and there's only room for one car at a time. Yeah. Now to me, I would think if there is room to pull over on your side, then you should pull over and let the person get by. Right. But obviously the natives who are indigenous to the land of inconsideration don't think like that. <laughs> and this idea, I don't know what it is where it becomes a battle getting down the street where the person got to drive faster and i'm talking about will not move over an inch and i got 10 cars parked next to my lane and they have nothing but a free space on their right i don't understand it, I don't and, it, it, it and, and that just gets on my nerves and that is nothing but the natives that's vintage natives now i gotta say one other thing and this is not a pet peeve and this is just real i want to tell us i want to say this to rodney and i want to say this to Derek. The day of the light skin dude is over. I hate to say it, it's over. Now, this is the thing. When y'all had Al B. Shore and y'all had all these dudes and stuff like that, y'all didn't handle it with humility. Y'all, y'all <laughs> made us kick rocks, right there. I'm right, Pete. Is that what they did? When y'all when the light skin dudes was in, y'all took advantage of it and treated us foul. I want you to know the dark skin dude is reigning supreme right now. So we're gonna try to help y'all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get a tan or something like that. We let you come to some events. Outside of that, y'all just tried to play us. That's it. Hey, my, my cousin, my, my, my cousin said uh, Wesley Snipes killed us in New Jack City when he when he did all Chris Williams. Oh, we did that. That, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. that, that, that was that was the end of it. That was it. That yeah, was, that was, that's right. That's I was right. gonna bring up. I was gonna bring up Chris Williams. Yeah, yeah. See what she wrote about Kelvin right there? But that had a good run though. Whatever no, you can say, no, we, please, let, let me feet. let me tell you this, right? I don't think that it's a light skin, dark skin no more with women. I think women are just trying to find a guy that's not wearing a dress. I, just I think that's what they're trying to do. Then they found the right podcast. Yeah. So the thing is, like you know, it's getting it's getting difficult out there. You know, what I'm saying for women to find a guy that's um kind of on the straight up, straight yeah. up and narrow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, personally, I think, like, men like us, like, we are a commodity now. Like, we, women are looking for, like, solid dudes. All right, like yo, saying, I, yo, Rod, that's a great point. So, we're going to make a deal. Let's do this tonight. Go ahead. We're going to make some trades. We're going to trade y'all little Nas X. All right? No, 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 no. No, no, no. We would take anybody back. We'll take anybody back. We trade y'all little Nas X. And R. Kelly, we'll take anybody nah. else. Kid Cuddy, no, no. Everybody know light skin people are great. 
people. We're nice people. We little don't yeah. deal with that. Little Uzi Vert? No. No, no, no. We don't have no, this problem no, no. with light skin. We don't have those issues. No. Uh-huh. We'll take anything back for those two. Okay. <laughs> so you got to take Larry you Elder. Movie. Larry you got to take, take, take Larry Elder. No, you got to trace my oh, life. That's, oh, that's old. That's old. You got to trace my life. Larry's Yo, Larry light skin? Not, we no, already no, got no, Larry no. Elder. He, now, with he, all that, with all that makeup. With all that makeup on, <laughs> with all that makeup on, he's trying to be like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. We, we want to put him in the way. I'll he take Bill Cosby. I'll take, I'll take Bill Cosby. Mm. Yo, you know what? Bill. Wait, hold up. Are there any bad Latin people? Everybody we name in this dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a mole. We have a little fun with She said one thing that black folks need to stop doing is attach a personality. Get off the trade, Dr. Moe. We're yeah, trading yeah, yeah. on the whole It's true, Simone, but yeah, we, no, we, we, we do it right now. Right. We just having we just having a black yeah. post space talk on, on, on social media right now. <laughs> this, this, <laughs> this is barbershop talk on social we just, media. We just cracking a little bit of fun. But since yeah. you mentioned Larry Elder, bro, we're gonna get into the well, first thing on the chopping block tonight. The GOP I was gonna say the California, uh Casita California recall hit. Stay on uh, stay tuned. So that's Larry Elder, that son of a bitch, bitch ass motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that's that son of a bitch right there. If anybody never saw an image of him wow. right there, his oh, bitch ass man. lost by a landslide, I think, right? Is it landslide? Yeah, 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 yeah landslide. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. false claims of a lot of stuff saying that the election, the recall is going to be, election is going to be rigged, all this other stuff. I, I just say, like, that, that slave owners should get reparations. Yeah, reparations. Yeah, yeah. Women, besides Rod, women, like you said, women don't want men in dresses. I think women don't want no bitch ass dudes either. And that's another bitch ass dude. Well, he's he's got a dress on under that suit. Yeah. He's, he's a coon outfit with a dress. Yeah. yeah. He's a coon. I, you, know? you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know what Larry Elder's on. I don't know if he's on a, a mixture of crack and dope together. I don't know what he's on and what kind of world he's living in. But um, there's no place here for Larry Elder. He can't come to the cookout ever. No, oh, no, no. Fuck no. Girl, he's the weirdo cousin. You don't even tell about the cookout. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I'm <laughs> yeah, you find out. We see the pictures online or something. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, no, uh, I don't, no, he's, I don't... He's, he's, he's a weapon at that point. At, yeah. uh, you know, Larry Elder, Candace Owens, and such people of that ilk. they you know. But Larry They're really weapons against blackness, man. Against yeah, us, you know? and he, they'll do anything to promote their own thing, to sell their own people, just to promote themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah never yeah. seen an era of so many self-centered people to do detrimental, to, be detrimental to other pe- their own people, just to get yeah. some fame, some clout. I'm like, yeah. dude, you, you're a smart yeah. person. For you to get a, a radio talk show and all that stuff like that, you're a smart enough person. You don't have to harm other people to get where you are. You already use your intelligence to get that platform. You can do it again. Don't have to do what harm people. Yeah, but no, he, he he wants they but they want a loyal white audience. That's what they're looking for because there's so much more money in that, you know. Yeah. And and that's that's what they're in that's what their intentions are because what they're doing is 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 evil. You know what I'm saying? It's just evil. Um, it's the epitome of self hatred. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. They're crazy, man. They sound crazy. They talk yeah. crazy. They sound crazy. But I don't know. Maybe there's maybe they have a place, man. You know what I mean? Like I don't know what we can do because. You know, they, 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 they stand so hard, you know, for the right wing and not even, you know, I mean, you could be conservative and then you could just be crazy conservative. It seems like they just stand for crazy conservative. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They just go all out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so I, I don't know, man. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm always been politically independent. You know, um, my vote is earned. It's not given. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. so I so on one level. Even though I find them just completely just a, a joke, like minstrel show level offensive, um, but maybe politically they have a, they have a position where um, they maybe they keep maybe they keep the Democratic uh, Party a little honest too because how often do we complain about them getting in and them kind of once you know for you know every four years you know it's all about us and then after that you know you know you don't hear, you don't hear anything, so. I'm glad you said that point, man, because. The Reverend Al Sharpton called to Biden to fight the filibuster. We can't depend on you here. When can we depend on you? Yeah. So what that what you just said is is what that echoes on a lot of black social platforms. A lot of people starting to speak out like we black people got you here now. What the fuck are you going to do, Joe Biden? Because I tell yeah. you now, we ain't giving that long term way to the fourth year. If he doesn't show and prove to me for the stuff I'm looking at, it's going to be some repercussions in the next election in 2022. 
for the, yeah. the, the, the bottom ticket. Well, I, I always thought he was a one-term president. It just the sheer... Not, uh, not him. I'm even talking about even to get president after him. Like, what's the oh, you're talking about the party. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, 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 like Kamala and anything like that, try to run. I think yeah, I mean that's fair. I mean that's that's fair. I mean that's that's part of it. I mean it it it's actually a negotiation. You you have to earn my vote. If I do give my vote, then that comes with some you know request that I want. That that's why I voted for you to represent my interest. And so I I do agree with you with that. And I think it's just not it's, it's any politician. It's anybody you do business with. You got to hold people accountable. You got to hold their feet to a fire. That's just the reality of it. Because it is human nature to get comfortable. People do it in relationships. People do it in business partnerships. Once people have what they want, it, it the pendulum swings a lot of times. So yeah, I agree with Sharpton with that. And and I think. And, and, and what we keep forgetting in some cases is we've got to understand that we've got to deal with our local level politicians as well. That's the thing. I think some people just are fixated on the White House. I mean, you know, your assembly people, your council people, you know, people. We got to walk into offices and get to know people and let people know these are people that represent us. We put you in office. Then as a result, we want to make sure that that our voice is heard and you should just magnify that. That's what it is. And you know what? I was I was just reading a uh, earlier a Brookings Institute a article, and uh, basically we're talking about how um, basically black folks uh, saved Biden and, uh, and and American democracy. You know, um, and you know they they pointed out the percentages, and you know you could just look at Atlanta, Philadelphia, and Detroit as uh, as examples. Um, you know, Georgia. I think over fifty percent of Democratic voters were black in Georgia, even though we have a state population of 33%. Uh, Michigan, 20% uh, of Democratic voters uh, are black. Uh, we make up a 14% state population. And Pennsylvania, for instance, 20, 21% of Democratic voters were black and 12% of uh, the state population is black. So we have consistently voted outside of our actual percentages. We've more than upheld our end of the bargain. You know, So now um, what, do, what happens? You know, uh, we're sending these people, so we're sending these people to Washington, and then what are we getting back in return? And except, you know, broken promises, uh, a whole bunch of excuses why they can't do it. Um, and, and it's like, you know, it's, it, it's, it's like that old saying in business, you know, location, location, location. They're the only, Democrats are the only um, game in town when it comes to, to black folks. You know, the Republicans don't even talk to us. You know, so maybe if you've got, you know, so maybe something needs to change in, in that regard, you know, so, um, so, you know, it's just interesting to think about, you know, we, 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 we really have to start looking at where we put, where we place our votes and to start demanding uh, what it is that, you know, we really want. So. Very well, very well said. Mm -hmm. Melvin, thanks. What Melvin said, I missed that, Sammy. I mean, Jamie. Damn, sorry. It said, we the people must keep it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you're right. Yep, it's all about the people always, man. Mm. Yeah. You know, you want to say something? Uh, I, you know, I think I think the Democrats have gotten like really comfortable with just expecting our vote without having to give us anything. Yeah. You know, the thing is until until we can unify and basically put people's feet to the fire, pretty much like what Calvin was saying, holding people accountable, it's not gonna change. It's not we we have to unify, we have to vote in blocks. Yes, and basically when somebody doesn't give us what we need for our vote. You basically, we have to basically crush them. And that's bottom line. Yeah. Because in, in certain states, they can't win without our vote. And we have to understand the power of the vote. Yeah. So. Yeah. And what Simone says. Yeah, with Jamie, but, yeah, but here you go. Yeah, she says, it seems like every other group of people have politicians genuinely vouching for them, but black people. Yeah, you know, and we get yeah, it. You're saying, that's just what you're saying, right? Yeah. Like, I, I've had, I had a conversation with Kelvin before, right? And and see, me and Kelvin talked outside of the job, I mean, outside of the, the platform, and he's not light-skinned, and I talked to him. <laughs> and, um, the thing is, like, until we gain political and economic power, then basically they're going to continue to ignore us because the dollar is the most powerful thing. Yeah. So the thing is, until we understand money and how it works and what money can do, Especially with dealing with them, and we're not supporting them because you got to realize, like, oh, good, Damien. What's up? What's up, Damien? You got to realize, like, white supporters of politicians—they're donating a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? They have businesses that um, can get government contracts and all stuff like that. Like, we're not in those positions, and until we get in those positions, we can't crank 
the politicians on. And that's what we need to do. You know, yep. so yep. the answer is uniting economic power and understanding how politics work. Yep. And that's the answer. Yep. And now just want to echo what Damien, economic independence, independence equal political power. So yes. through, if anybody, Dr. Claude Anderson, you can pick up his books. About, yeah, he talks exactly. about that all the time. And then, yeah. you know, and a shout out to Damien, the framework, bro. I'm sorry about last night. He wanted to check in about, uh, they had a show on about the verses last night, man. I, I was tired, D. My body was beat from the job. They working me over. I see why you left. I'm beat tired, bro. And the framework was doing about the verses last night. They had two episodes last night. So check out, like, and subscribe to Framework. They will support us, and we want to support our brothers back. Absolutely. Yep, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Find them on YouTube, people. Yeah. Continue to come on every... Damien, put in the chat. I don't know what night you come on. I just want to make sure I say it right. It's Monday, Tuesday. I know you've been on a lot this week. As long as it ain't Wednesday night. I think they come on just before us. I think they come I'm on just on. before. I think they come on just before. So I try to chop in with them, but sometimes when they want, to, want me to get in, I got to get ready for this show. So I'll, so I'll get in for a few minutes, man. But I'm going to log in live with them next time, man. I promise. Where it's going. Um, okay. So we're talking about politics and stuff like that. Yeah, Wednesday nights at 7 There you go. Okay. Where the fame work, yeah. We're going to so check you now, out, Damon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, and Lisa, too, I think she has a show. Lisa, if you're on the chat tonight, Colt Jam, please tell us so we can shout out your show, too, and get people to like and subscribe on that joint, too. Um, so the New York Crime Bill, right? They're trying to change the New York Crime Bill. Uh, a assembly person outside, out of Brooklyn named uh, Her 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 Lee, something like that, something like that. She, I can't get the person's name right. I believe they are going to try to name Crime Bill by their brother, Michael K. Williams, because we all know Michael K. Williams was big into prison reform, and our brother Dilly part of the level pretty early in life. But this is one of his goals in life. He was always about, he was a humanitarian, he was a community person. He's always about equal rights for LGBTQ. And this is one of the main things he wants to stay on. So I would, that'd be kind of dope that a brother like that, that played these criminal roles and sometimes that showed a different light of the criminal in there to help out prison reform. Because he, he was always, he had platforms on his TV shows. And he was not TV show, but like when he was on, a, yeah, TV show, okay, on HBO, he was talking about prison reform. And he's, he was always out there in the streets marching and, and talking about it. So, and trying to get legislators to understand and listen to that. So, Thoughts on that brother getting a bill named that thing? You know yeah, what? They, they, they should call it the Omar Little Crime Bill. That's what they should call it. They should call it Omar Coming. That's what yeah. they should call it. Omar, Omar Coming. Oh, Omar man. Omar Coming. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, the Yo, for the hills, nah, man. Omar's that, Coming. I think, I think that's excellent, man. I think that's commendable. Anytime, you know, you have a legacy that, that outlives your life, I mean, um that you that meant you live for something you know that you have a legacy after your life is over so that that's i, I think that's awesome and i hope everything goes through and um again it's, it's painful because the brother was just going too soon as far as lisa's concerned lisa i'm gonna check you out because the yankees are my team but they scrubs right now and yeah. I'm <laughs> jamie put a, put a thing back up jamie real quick what she said yeah she said the empire 161 show sunday evenings for yankee baseball fans yeah, right. Man, man. Oh, man, you got like, some Mets fans here. Cole James, you got some Mets fans here. They, might get mad. they don't really count, I don't think. No, I'm a Yankee fan. I'm a Yankee fan, too. I'm a Yankee fan, too. Yeah, you know, right. yeah. But yeah, you know what? On, on, on Michael K. Williams, though, you know, um, it's great that he is being remembered in such a way. Um, I, I, I was, yeah, Kelly, don't give up. There you go. I, I don't know. I was looking around for what was actually in the bill, though, proposed bill. I couldn't really find it. I didn't really have time. So, I mean, you know, so I'll, I'll look a little bit more um, because I know it had to do with mass incarceration, you know, um, curtailing mass incarceration issues. But I don't know what's exactly is in the bill. Um, I want it to be something substantive, you know, substance, substantive. You know, I don't want it to just be something where a politician kind of just gets behind it because, you know, they, you know, because that's, they're trending and they get some clout off of it. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I want it to mean something. So, uh, but so, so, so in the meantime, I'll, 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 I'll just say, uh, I'm happy that he got it and I'll, and I'll, and I'll stay optimistic and, and I'll find out more about it. You know what I mean? But I will be looking a little bit more into it myself though. Yeah, definitely. That yeah. should be funny. That's just here come over. That is some funny. Mm -hmm. Yo, yo, we need we need an Omar in uh, Omar in these streets now to make all this nonsense stop. That's what we need. So get rid of firecrackers, the speeding ass cars. Yeah, all people that don't pull over, right? Yeah, that's right. And that's crack down cool. all the fake ass Texas license plates that they got out here. Tired of fake ass white and black Texas. I'm that's what I'm dry sticking. 
Oh, that's okay. the other thing. I stole, I stole one, of, one of the license plates off one of our cars. That's Yo, <laughs> Dean, that's not dry snitching. That's just snitching, period. <laughs> period, that's snitching. No, I remember. Yo, because they drive crazy with them fucking fake plates, bro. Yeah, yeah. Well, they had what a crap down on these. You know, but I had a real plate they stole. Yeah. They probably stole it because they fake plate got confiscated. How many black folks you know from Wyoming driving to South Jamaica, Queens? Unless it's a rental car. True, but no, come yeah. on. I don't know fucking 2002 uh, uh, Civic, <laughs> Honda Civic speed with the loud ass pipes on it. No, nah, that shit ain't happening, bro. Oh, man. That ain't happening, man. Yeah. I'm tired of them motherfuckers. There's always <laughs> some sort of scam going, man. Always, always, yeah. always a scam going. We're, we're left off, man. I've lost my position here, man. Wait a minute. Okay. Oh. In, in New York City, COVID-19 vaccination proof mandate for restaurants, dining, and what and other companies like McDonald's, Goldman Sachs are some of the companies mandating vaccines for all all of the employees. Thoughts on this, gentlemen? Because I know it's happening, and also for people that don't know, in New York City, anybody that's receiving New York City money, like uh, school at school teachers and stuff like that, they have to get vaccinated by I think the first shot by the twenty seventh. It's affecting some of the nonprofit worlds. That does anybody have school programs that they have to get vaccinated uh, by the twenty seventh. Or I think the companies will be letting people go. So what are your thoughts, guys? I just think it's going to get worse, man. I think the contention that's just building, man, is just it's just tough. I mean, there are people that are friends that are now at odds. There are people that are associates that are now at odds, and it's just tough. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I you know, I, like I said, I understand both sides. There, there are people that are afraid of this thing that feels it's going to be detrimental to their health, and they just feel like they don't trust it. And, you know, there are other people that have a lot more trust in it. And I, I, I don't think, you know, well, there should be one extreme or another. I think there still has to be, you know, like I, I find it insulting that they put up these ridiculous commercials trying to get people vaccinated. I am vaccinated, by the way. But there's this, they got this one commercial where this dude looks like he's just homeless or something. And yeah, everybody, sure. I know the worst thing to do with the mask words. down there. Yeah, his shirt is dirty and he's every five words. You know, mm -hmm. we need to do it be black. And the person that came up with it is black. And then, yeah. you know, the people that tell you to do it is black. I mean, in other words, don't insult people's intelligence. <laughs> don't throw somebody up there looking all crispy, crunchy, because yeah. you know, they black to say that, you know, they're not a medical professional. Understand this. Black people have a right to to understand their health as well. And some people are concerned, and black people in particular, who feel disenfranchised oftentimes and feel that they've been duped by the government, obviously need to take you know, more inventory of this because they're concerned that nobody's ever had their best interest at heart and want to know why somebody would have it now. So sure. I understand both sides, but I, I do think that people should have certain rights to certain liberties and freedoms that you don't want to infringe upon. And I think that's becoming part of the, the contention that, that's going on right now. So I understand both sides. And I just think it's going to be tough because right now the, the government is digging their heels in and they're saying basically we're going to force you. It's going to be involuntary submission, but you're going to submit either way. And that's what it looks like. Yeah, right, yeah. You about to say something before? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I know I agree with Calvin, you know what I'm saying? Um, I thought we were in a country of um freedoms and stuff like that. Look like that's not the case. Um, the thing is, I'm gonna start with the with, with the restaurants, right? So basically, if a person's not vaccinated, basically that's a punishment of not being able to spend your money in a restaurant. I mean, like, think about let's think about let's use some common sense here. You know, so is that like a punishment because I get to keep my money and I don't go in that restaurant? I mean, it's a little little ridiculous to me, especially to go in there to sit down and take my mask off. You know what I'm saying? Only have to put it on when I go to the bathroom and come back because COVID chills out when I'm sitting down eating. You know what right. I'm saying? Which is ridiculous. It doesn't take a break. You know what I'm saying? If either it's out there or it's not, you know. But the thing is, you're going to get a you're going to get pushed back from people with this because we talked about this earlier. I believe that this is close to basically being able to choose whether you can have an abortion or not. You're basically trying to make people take something that they don't want to take or that they are in fear of because of history of this country. So the thing is this, if this country had been on the up and up, then you wouldn't have people as afraid. And then, you know, the thing is too, like I've heard people make comments and stuff that, you know, about them being vaccinated and people being unvaccinated. The thing is, if you took the vaccine, you should feel safe that you are covered against somebody that's not vaccinated. Why are you so worried about somebody that's not vaccinated? Exactly. The vaccine was supposed to protect you. So right. why are you worried about an unvaccinated person? Right. 
It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Now, the thing is, the way the government rolled this out, it didn't make a lot of sense either. They, ne- they have press conference. They have state of the unions. The president comes to speak. They never rolled out anything explaining what this thing was. They just threw it out there and threw it upon people. That's why people are concerned about it. And I don't yeah. want to keep going in this because I don't want to deter people from taking it. But I believe if you want to take it, you take it. If you don't want to take it, you don't take it. And that's it. That's how I, be- I believe in you should be able to have a choice with something that goes in your body. No, and yeah, absolutely, Rodney. I think that that has always been something just us as black people, 400 years in this on this, on this this side of the earth, and we still don't have control of our bodies. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And it's like, so you have a lot of people out there, you know, with legitimate concerns, myself being one of them, even though I did get the, the vaccine, I got the first shot anyway. Anyway, all right. Um, the second one is due. I'm not due for it yet, but I'll get it. Um, but, you know, I feel as though, again, like, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't feel safe. And I, we spoke about this earlier. I took the vaccine. I don't feel safe. You know, I don't feel safe from COVID. I took the, I took the vaccine because, you know, um, I knew what would happen if I didn't take the vaccine. You know, I didn't know if I would get COVID, but I knew that I would be ostracized. I knew that I was going to have a whole bunch of problems, you know. And, um, and I think that that's probably what a lot of people are, are, are having an issue with. You know, um, and and plus another thing that I do is I listen to what they I didn't get like you. I listen to what's said. You know, I get a lot of conflicting uh, information. Mm-hmm. You know, so they say they started off saying, okay, the vaccine is not going to um, it's not going to prevent you from getting the disease, right? Well, actually, in the beginning, Derek, a lot of people thought it was going to stop them from getting it because right. I know somebody that took it and they said. I honestly thought I was under the impression that I wouldn't be able to get it because I'm vaccinated. So right. he felt like he was kind of deceived in a way. Right. So the thing, and I feel that maybe a lot of people feel that now, but now that wasn't true. You can right. get it and you can spread it. And you can spread it. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, so it's, it's, it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to explain to people now, you know what I mean? Just this, you know, to explain away. It's just a lot of conflicting information, a lot of new information coming on. And there are certain things um with the disease what people are really dying from in the disease you know there's like for instance one of them is blood clots you know mm. so i'm looking for information on whether or not um you know does aspirin help you know it's a blood thinner you know mm. simple things like that and there's no information on it maybe it helps maybe it doesn't i don't know but the important thing is no information on the reason there's no information on it is because there haven't been studies for it done yet. correct yeah, it's not it's a lot too new. The, the line yeah. on the on the blood clots, I think, is a uh, very very low number, and that was only when uh, I think it was the, the um, what's the one the other company, the Johnson Johnson book. Johnson Johnson. Yeah, yeah. the Johnson Johnson, and they said it was very 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 rare that that happened. Okay. So, yeah. So that, that, well, I know people who I know that I know people who couldn't get the vaccine because they have a blood clot condition. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So now, what happens to those people? You know. So then it's just to me, it's just a lot. It's just a not a lot of stuff that just um, that's just very contradictory and very incomplete information. And it would be nice to not have it be mandated with incomplete information, you know. So that's 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 my little two cents on it. And, and then the thing is, you got to pay attention with the mandate, because, first of all, yeah. people in the Senate ain't being yeah. forced to take exactly. it. People in the Congress ain't being forced to take it. And they're the ones police, the laws. O- police officers ain't being forced to take it. Post office ain't being forced to take it because you know why? Because they work for the government. But mm-hmm. they're going to make everybody else that's not working or have menial jobs, they're going to force them to take it and put their job on the line, mm-hmm. which in my opinion is effed up. I think they're going to have to because the, the federal government, they're not because if they have the soldiers already in taking it back. Yeah. My 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 yeah my my son my my son is they they, they they he's been mandated to take the vaccine you know and I and my advice to him was take it you know I mean you know it's to me you don't know what it's going to do but you know what's going to happen to you if you don't take it you know You're right I mean? yeah. yeah that came in no guy John Johnson can't think. even make baby powder alone <laughs> alone damn vaccine exactly yeah and I also think the NBA oh is not look government that's workers that's have been mandated because that's, that's a government work, that's a government worker right there so. yeah. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Okay, but I, okay. Does the people and that's making the laws do they got to take it? Last I heard, the people that's up there making yeah. the decisions they don't have to take it. You get all those Republicans in there that's not taking it, and they're not did nothing done to them. They're not losing their positions in the Senate or the Congress. You're right, but, that, but a lot of them have taken it on the low. That's the funny thing. Because all the ones that's anti this and anti that, 
the mask and is then, all of those, but it's shown that most of them have been been vaccinated. Yeah, and then look at look at look at this week. We just opened up for football. Stadiums packed. Stadiums packed because there's a lot of money to be made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And also, like some things, like you know, um, nonprofits are starting to lose their after school staff because they don't want to uh, take it. It's one of the issues I got going on in my job now. Um, you know, people might have to look for other work, and they might have to move to other states to find work. It's, it's a hard situation for everybody, man. It's, like, it's going to be—it's really ugly, man. It's, it's, it's going it's to get worse, dude. I'm telling you, it's it, going has, to get worse. it has destroyed relationships. Like yeah. that too, so. But I said it in an earlier show. I said this thing is being designed to divide us. Yes. to break us down. Yes. And the thing is, they, they made people that were vaccinated feel better than they, than people that weren't vaccinated. And that was the issue. And then I'm going to tell you something else that I um, feel. This is just my opinion from having a conversation <laughs> with somebody. <laughs> Wait a minute, he said he got the, got the Magic Johnson type vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> That's the good you know, stuff. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, it's like, bring that out. <laughs> like having a conversation with a certain person. Like some people have vaccine remorse now. Like they don't feel like they should have took it. And then they feel like they want everybody in the same boat with them because they took it. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of it comes through. It's coming out too. I think think both sides, people who are vaccinated might be going to people unvaccinated. I think it's the same way with unvaccinated people. I just had a discussion with some people from the job yesterday saying certain kind of words, uh, calling vaccinated people stuff. So I think it's a divide. I think to me, I told people like this, this country has never been together. It's nothing that will bring this country together. Ever. I, I agree with that. Not I don't the think pandemic, not nobody think, knocking out the towers, nothing will bring this country together. I, I'm going to say 9 11 kind of brought people together. For one day, on September, <laughs> on, one day. On September 15th, they was fucking beating up Muslims. <laughs> and the other, other guys are with the turbans, the Sheikh Sheikhs, whoever they is. They is so. the, va- the vaccinated need to be protected from the unvaccinated by forcing the unvaccinated to get vaccinated by a vaccine that doesn't protect the vaccinated from the unvaccinated. Please make it make sense. Yeah, please make it make sense. Wow. Well, you know, yeah, yeah. Excellent I wonder. Way of putting it. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder who that is that made us. Well, very smart, very intelligent, very intelligent person, obviously. Yeah, that person I think has insurance on somebody in there. I'm not <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I swear the devil will not use me tonight. I'm, not, I'm, I'm too tired to, to wrestle with the devil, but I got enough strength to not let the devil use me tonight. Yo. We've been so we've been chased by fear, man. You know, we've been led well, by fear, even fear to, yeah, to, to yeah. separate us, man. Derek, you're hundred percent right. I always say fear and hope. If you're selling fear and hope, you're going to get a lot of people to follow. All yeah, right, but well, one thing we can right. unify on: we're all against the student loan people. So that's <laughs> the most I can say. yeah. As we move on, man. As we yep. move on, real quick. So, um, uh, real quick. So uh, we already saw like the New York City hospitals uh, stop delivering uh, some New York City hospital people stop delivering babies and the uh, nurses because it was um, about the not having the vaccinated not being vaccinated the mandate. So now, you already see that in the, in the workplace. Yeah, I mean, what did what, what? So what's the answer? Like, if people dig in their heels, see, here's what I'm saying. Like, for me, I don't feel safe. Right? Everyone wants to get to a place of safety. With limited fear, we want to get to a place of safety. So you have people who are medical professionals whose job it is to help others. Now, what do you do with those people? You know, like you walk in and you're not, you're not, you're not vaccinated. You know, what do you do with those people? You know, I I don't, I don't get those people quit over them. Over those people quit, you know, those are, those, those are knowledgeable workers. How do you replace those people still having babies? Hell, people probably having more babies right now because they can't go nowhere. They're home. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. who knows? You know what I mean? But so I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't get that. I don't understand that part. Man. No. You know? I, I agree. I agree. I agree with you, Derek. Like those are medical workers that are that you don't want to everyone take back. you can get, man. You know? Yeah, you, you, you got one. You got medical workers that don't want to take the vaccine, which lets you know something. And then right. the other thing is, right, like I've heard people say, Oh, that's messed up. And you know they 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 walked out. I don't think anybody walked out while anybody was delivering a baby. I agree with Tim on this one. Yeah, ask a lot of medical folks. I, medical I think everybody. Yeah, I think it's a political. It's no, be, yeah, I think it's political. It is. It is political too. Yeah. I'm not saying everybody's yeah. political though. Some people don't want to take the vaccine. It has nothing to do with politics. But the thing is too, like they say, well, 
they were going to be what? They were going to be fired anyway, right? So the thing is, some people just feel more comfortable with them being fired. They stood on a square and they believed in what they believed in and they walked out. They, right. they told the establishment that you are not in control. Guess what? Guess who's in control? We are. We're the ones here doing the work. We're the ones here busting our ass. And then basically, we're going to show you who's really in control. So they gave the middle finger to the establishment and they walked off the job and shut the baby ward down. So, I mean, let's think about it. Like, you, you were going to fire them anyway. So they just beat you to the punch. I, I actually commend them for their behavior. Yeah, but I wonder how they're going to pay the bills. Can we bring up Brad's they, statement? Yeah, 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 the, thing yeah. Is, the thing is, <laughs> like you have heard you say before, everything ain't about money. All right. It can be a hard choice. That's yeah. what I tell people. Everybody's choice and chance every day they wake up. So yeah. they can go work in another state that, that that's not for it. So everybody's choice and chance. Yeah. Yeah, Brad says, how do you replace the people that died? That's a good point. You can't replace it, them. It, you know, you, you can't, can't replace, replace them. them. You can't replace them. And there's another thing that I want to bring up about that. And when you turned on the news when this first started, all they talked about was people dying. They didn't talk about people surviving. They didn't talk about people having mild symptoms. They didn't talk about that. They didn't talk about the 40 something million that yeah. did that survived it. All you'd heard was deaths, deaths, deaths. The other thing that they're keeping the numbers away that they're not broadcasting, they're not broadcasting how many people that are vaccinated that are still coming up with the flu, with, with the virus. So the bottom line is, you can't get caught up in media no. about one thing. Sometimes the death numbers is still haven't even reached one percent on what we do. Wait, let me finish. I'm not sure finish. And they haven't died for a normal year. The flu has killed more people in some cases. Yeah. But so I'm the thing is, don't just focus on death. I'm not I'm downplaying deaths, but the bottom line is this: we're not looking at the bigger picture. You're just focused on the wrong number because that's what was pushed onto you. No, what I'm going to say is, they are numbers of some people that are vaccinated. And they compare them now. The numbers I'm looking at, and what, what it is, is the people that's unvaccinated. How many of them are dying right now? They're saying that if more people died in the state of Florida this year than they had in the 20 years in the wars in Afghanistan, in the 20 in the 20 years of the Afghanistan war. So they are focusing on both. They just talk about how many people that are unvaccinated that are in the ICUs. That's really worry about too, and stuff like that. and taking up those spaces that are for people that need to have um, that need to have serious surgeries, stroke victims, heart attacks. Mm -hmm. Those those things. Sorry. Uh, well, let me say this. I, I got an echo. I think. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make light of this at all because this is very serious. So okay. I just want to ask a question. Do you need to be vaccinated by fireworks? That's all I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just. I'm, no, I'm, just, I'm asking because that may be something we need to look into. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that might be a fix. That I, might be a fix. It, that Calvin. might be a fix. Yeah. <laughs> hey, to speak on something else that just blew up. Fauci debunks coronavirus vaccine infertility conspiracy after Nicki Minaj tweets about her cousin getting his balls swollen after the fact uh, so they canceled the wedding because his balls got real swollen and then he was impotent. I think her cousin fucking got burnt and that was a venereal disease and he used that shit to cover it up. Alleg allegedly. 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 Now, the, the thing is, I'm not I'm not with, with my, what Nicki Minaj did. I'm yeah. not I'm not co-signing that. Nicki Minaj shouldn't have gave her opinion about something that her cousin's cousin's friend told her. But the thing is, there's no proof that that's what caused his balls to swell up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, could there have been an issue with something else there? And then he wanted to blame it on the vaccine. I don't know. Allegedly, that's what he's saying. It was from the thing. But I don't I don't believe that people with huge flat platforms should be giving their opinion about trying to make people not take it or take it. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 that's that's just how I see it. Yeah, but she says, "How many of the vaccinated people are actually vaccinated?" Since a lot of people obtain fake vaccination cards. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the feds, the feds will be on that. The feds will be on that. Let's let's stay on this topic. The feds will be on that. Yeah. that but yeah, but yeah. yeah, you're right. And I'm sorry if somebody said it was a Nicki Minaj cousin. Cousin was getting married to some dude. Whatever the hell it was. That motherfucker was cheating. His balls got swollen because he didn't take care of that disease. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Thank you, Rodney. Yeah, I got you. I'm yeah, <laughs> the thing is, and it, Nicki Minaj should know at this stage right now with a platform as big as she has, that if you say anything negative on your platform about the vaccine, they, the media is going to come for you. They're going to they're gonna come for you. You know, I think they just invited her to the White House now to come talk to talk about it, right? That's what yeah, she had yeah. to talk well, about. They, they got to they got to get her right and get home. Get, they got to get her on code, man. They got they got to get her on code. But, but yeah. also, Nikki said I think she was planning on getting 
the vac- vaccinated anyway because her show money is getting fucked up. Right? Then she shouldn't yeah. be talking about it then. Then she shouldn't be talking about it because she's going to take it. She shouldn't say yeah. nothing. Yeah. No. Yeah, that, you're right, Ron. You, I, I agree with you a thousand percent. Yeah. If she's going to take it, then she shouldn't be giving her opinion about something negative about it. That's the bottom yeah, line. I yeah, because uh, the thing is, she just showed that her bottom line, if it's affected, then I got, I'm got i going to take it. So then yeah, yeah, what, are you, yeah, what are you even talking about? Yeah, she got paid for some more stuff for a pedophile husband. Allegedly. 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 allegedly, 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 allegedly I'm sorry about allegedly. And, I, and yeah, and then she's saying that son, uh, son was sick. Oh. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to be honest with you. I feel that Jamie was been laying for D because mm-hmm. he got away last week. Yes, yeah, D, I'm, I'm gonna speak up for you, D. I, I think that might have been a makeup scroll right there. You That's made a it a scroll. whole it's show. Like a makeup like call in the, in, in, in the NBA. Yeah. I think yeah. you got a scroll. Bullshit. <laughs> All right, right. We about to say, right? Nah, D, well, now D want to hear me speak. D said, no. <laughs> D said, D, Rob, what you got to say now? No. now I, think, I think Jamie was laying for D because he got away a full episode last week without any banner running across the bottom. So he's going to he's gonna be laying for you this show, D. I'm just you letting sure, you know. There's probably something he forgot. He let nah, you go a couple of times. Jamie's the same motherfucker that was my best man in my, my fucked up ass wedding back in the day. That's why you ain't gonna be my best man on the next one. I ain't doing this shit twice, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> see the power? The, see? And he moved it to the bottom. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Move me back over with Derek, man. Let's keep, let's keep yeah. the angle right how we had. Let's keep the show going with the right angle, man. That's some bullshit. <laughs> right, man. Man. That's some bullshit, yeah. man. But listen, man, we got the topic of our, our, our relationships, man, this time, man. I think, Jamie, can you play the video for us real quick, brother? It's an unpopular opinion, but this piece of wisdom going to set you free right here. Realizing that no one can cheat on you. It's about understanding that you have no possession over nobody. Nobody belongs to you. And once you realize this, this will simply set you free. We as humans be choosing bondage. We be choosing slavery because we don't realize that we have a choice of our own freedom and our own awareness of realizing that, dang, man, nobody belongs to me. So let me set them free. But a lot of people don't want to hear this. I know, man. This is when you got to stop taking things so personal stop feeling like you have ownership and control over somebody else's well-being and someone else's life decisions if they want to do what they want to do it has nothing to do with you they did not cheat on you they cheated on themselves they have no loyalty to themselves stop making everything about you this is them, this is their character, and they just exposed it to you. You can either deal with it, cry about it, pout about it, or move on with it. It's up to you, boo. First of all, like I said, that girl's skin was getting kissed by the sun. And, yes. she, and she got Miss Sally color now. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> she, got some, she, got some, she got some great point. Interesting. She has some interesting uh, uh, perspective. Now, for clarification, I don't think she's saying, and this is what I got from it. I don't think she's saying that um, relationships are bondage, right? Let's. That's not what I got from it, you know. That late, but what she's saying is that um, you know you choose everything in your relationship. You know, you uh, if you are married, there is a contract. You know, um, I am with you, you're with me, we're going to roll like that. Um, And then if you go outside of that, then you're breaking the contract. You know what I mean? You've exposed yourself, you know, um, and your own integrity. But um, so, you know, but that's something different. You know what I mean? That's something different. So Did um, did y'all play me a different clip? (laughs) <laughs> was, that, was, that, was that based on the clip you just saw? <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm trying to tell you. I go deep with mine, bro. I go deep with mine. You hear Don't how worry, deep Calvin. Deep Don't deep worry, Calvin. You have your time to speak. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would not, but, but no, I'm just saying, though. I don't think that's... Listen, that's not what I got from it. That's not what I got from it. Because what she said near the end, you know what I mean? I can see why, you know what I mean? 
So, you know, she, she I, I caught on to the part about integrity. You know what I mean? She said, don't cry. And basically, don't get don't get caught up over someone cheating over you. Don't get caught up with someone cheating. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Somebody said, what? <laughs> I'm with them on that. Okay, we be right. So as well, you can't take advice when anyone starts a sentence with me. Hey, Ebonics is a language. <laughs> Ebonics is a legit language, exactly. Go ahead, Kelvin. You go ahead. Now. What go I go what I heard ahead. was we are never gonna get anywhere as, as a people. people. That's, that's <laughs> right. you know, I, I, I I think that's very very uh, dismissive. All right, man. It, it, I tried it to clear it up. Of, bad, bro. You know what it reminds me of? <laughs> it, it, it reminds me of a of a of a, a college freshman who who read their first sociology book. That's what it reminds me of, and they've come up with some nuanced thing that the rest of the world doesn't know. To me, the reality of it is this: you don't just you know dismiss you know what people have vested together. I could be like, you know what? My mortgage company, y'all don't own the earth. So y'all have this account. <laughs> Nobody owns any land. God made the at the end of the day, you get put out. The reality of it is this. Mm. If you make a commitment to somebody, it's not about ownership. What it is, it's relationship. And that is that is something that is an agreement between people. So mm. if someone breaches that agreement, they have actually, whether they cheated on themselves or not, they inadvertently cheated on the person as well. And that's the reality of it. So we can't just walk around. I go into the supermarket. Y'all don't own these apples. <laughs> so to me, I thought that was uh, some foolishness. And because I'm here with some very dignified men, I won't take it any further than what I would have ordinarily said because I'm not going to let the enemy use me. They said, but, uh, God damn. Or, almost. <laughs> Look, they said that somebody else said it. I for me. Night night and my wife going to forget about yeah. it. <laughs> um, I'm I'm going to continue on Kelvin's path, and I'm going to say that's the that's a big crock of bullshit that she was putting out there. Um, the, the bottom line is, it sounds like a a cheetah's um, slogan. That's what she seems like she's running for. You know, um, if you in a, like Kelvin just said, if you are in a committed relationship and you have an understanding with your mate that you all guys are together. You, and you or she goes out and see you you cheated. I don't it, it's just plain and simple. I mean, don't tell me about nobody owns nobody, whatever. Yeah, we know people don't literally own somebody, but the bottom line is somebody, if they put themselves in a position of being in a committed relationship, they should hold to it. And that's the bottom line. It's a mutual Correct. agreement. It's a mutual agreement. And if you decide you you cannot be in a committed relationship, you should not be in committed relationship. And then you can go see whoever you want and be who whatever you want. And I'm sure there's a lot of guys that will appreciate that you with that attitude. So, that's but right. yeah, that's just I, a bunch of bullshit. I'm taking a quote from Vampire in Brooklyn. Sin is good. <laughs> <laughs> so you cheat. It's good sin. It's some good sin yeah. out there. So, you know, but no, uh, listen. I, I I don't know. Man. I have no I have no comment yeah. besides that. Black only thing I want to say black men don't <laughs> black men don't cheat. Black men don't cheat. There you go. <laughs> Yo, can you imagine me and Derek putting that bullshit on our wives? Oh, you don't hell own no. us. <laughs> <laughs> you don't own us. We can do whatever we want. No one owns us. <laughs> you know, oh, it, 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 it the show. Come on, it was the mule, Pop. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I be mean, coming on a show like this. My, my whole shit be swollen up. I, I, I wonder if a point, like you know, because like I said, like when people say you're walking papers, is it when she's saying bondage? Is that so that I'm just trying to play the, the other side of this right now? Because everybody, all three on that side, I'm gonna just go to the other, other side on this one. Yeah. So what do you think? With, like with the papers, when she's saying the papers like a bondage thing, is that owning the? You know, okay, then she yeah. then she shouldn't get married. Then that's it. She doesn't believe but in she, marriage. She don't get married. But she's but she's not. But she never said the word marriage anyway. Like you know, th this generation they don't really consider marriage anyway you know what i mean the way with you know the, the marriage that whole concept of marriage has become very very fluid you know what i mean um it's you know She's got i ain't gonna get it i'm not gonna get into the politics of it but you know it's very fluid as, you know as it is right now you know what i mean so that so naturally the ideas regarding what you should base your marriage on are very different from what we grew up with she, she sounds like a person that has either been hurt or just hurt somebody yeah, it's that Nikki. Well, about to hurt somebody, maybe, you know? Yeah, maybe she yeah. was cheated on, so I guess maybe this is some type of shield to protect her yeah, I mean, maybe, feelings maybe. for the future, you know? Then maybe, hey, maybe, 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 maybe. But you have to reverse that as well. So you want Valentine's Day? Look, 
I don't own you. You so. don't own you, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I don't want to buy nothing just for you or something right. at all. Right. Because, right. You, know, you gotta spread it around a little bit, right? It's love day. It's love day. I love a lot Kelvin, of Kelvin, you can go in this direction. <laughs> I, I decided to spend my money on someone else because I'm spread it out. I, 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 I have to let everybody enjoy right. me, you know? Right. Right. I'm, so I'm I know you understand that. Yeah, it's an option to buy. <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, can you bring it? I think what you call it? Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, that wow. Was, I see Brad on that one. And, uh, Brad, uh, yeah, I think she said, Akilia said she don't think uh, she condones cheating. And then, uh, you know, so I don't yeah, think so. I don't think so. Either. I think I, I get it. I don't think she's condoning cheating. I don't get I didn't get that vibe from that, from that one. Well, well, it. you may not have heard this part of the video, Derek. She also says she thinks that uh, boxing is falling off. I just want to tell you. <laughs> oh, let's see, man. <laughs> Don't start that shit with him, man. Listen, man. Jamie, brother, on that note, Jamie, take us to commercial, please. <laughs> I'm Dawn Kelly, and I'm the founder and CEO of The Nourish Spot, a healthy food and beverage haven in Southeast Jamaica, Queens, chosen in 2019 as Micro Business of the Year by the U.S. Small Business Administration. My adult children, Jade and Owen Duncan, and I established The Nourish Spot to provide affordable access to healthy produce to help our neighbors combat chronic diseases, to provide jobs for a diverse community youth. And it's no secret that small businesses play a critical role in the local economy. It's also proven that community is vital to the growth of small businesses. So come, let us nourish you at the Nourish Spot. We're open Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 6, and Saturdays, 10. Last year, really, you notice companies have started really with this uh, uh, inclusion, di uh, diversity, and stuff like that. And they, inside the companies, trying to get these apartments, a lot of, lot of stuff was, oh, um, a, a lot of stuff was old, saying it was old to us. Uh, not old to us, but it was promised to us. But they haven't really done it. And we know how HR has dealt with some of the issues when we come up with race. So the brother we have on coming on tonight, our brother, Tariel Simmons. Is an equity, diversity, and inclusion champion and host of the Rise Up Urban Nation podcast. So, Jamie, without further ado, can you bring our dear brother in tonight and let's chop it up? What's up, yes, my yes, dear brother? Yes, what's, what's going, going on, on brothers? What's up, what's up, what's up, man? What's going on? What's up, man? 
Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. I'm talking about, first of all, I love the shirt, brother. I love the shirt. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Decolonizer. Exactly. Yeah. Decolonizer right there. Decolonizer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, man. So my brother from another mother. So tell people who you are, man. What do you do, man? Yeah, my name is Earl Simmons. Uh, I am a DNI champion, and I do that in my day job. And uh, um, you know, like crazy enough is I, I've I've done workforce development most of my life, but I, I before they before this DNI thing became popular, I was building programs in the hood to help um, you know people of color uh, get into different middle wage jobs and doing that already equitably, and then you know. You know, Black Lives Matter happened, and then DNI became a big thing, and then and then they made a they made a new lane for me. So I was like, "Wait, <laughs> I've been doing this." So oh, it got a title now, <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they give and they giving out checks. Major League Baseball just sent me to them today on LinkedIn. Yeah, them right. Them they looking for they looking for somebody to do a DNI work, man. It's, it's getting kind of crazy, man. Yeah. yeah. So, how, long, how, long, how long have you been doing this? For? So I've been doing uh, workforce development work for about the past six six years now, um, and, and I kind of fell into it because I, I thought I was going to go into um, doing like program development for nonprofits and fundraising development, and then uh, I, I got into workforce development working for an organization out here, the Sandy Workforce Partnership back in the day, and then they just happened to work with the mayor's office to build different youth programs programs for um refugee community people with disabilities to get them back to work so that's how i got 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 into this thing yeah. hey, we, Tanya, got a, we got a question yeah we, yeah we had a question and it pretty much mirrored what i was going to ask you uh for people who don't really know and i may just be one of them um what is dni exactly you know what i mean and why is it important and why is there such a um why is there a, a, a i guess movement towards it by companies you know yeah, so DNI stands for diversity and inclusion. And, you know, since we had this eye awakening over COVID and George Floyd, um, companies have included diversity, equity, and inclusion. And now you'll see some companies put the B in there. So it'd be diversity, equity, equity, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Uh, and basically what that is, is how do we start to look at the different systems that are in place and create systems that really reflect the workforce and allow people to be their most authentic uh, self? Uh, I would have to say authentic professional self because they don't want you being all the way to authentic. You know, the, there has to be some professionalism in there, but your most authentic self and use that as traits. Um, to help benefit the company because if you look at all the studies we know that you know generally speaking a diverse company if they're able to use all the assets right they can make great product systems programs and etc if they're using it right I, I tell people it's like making a good pot of gumbo you guys ever had gumbo yeah what, you, you see how big we are mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> What kind of what kind of question is that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what? Let me let me say let me say this. Um, you know, in in New York, we have the women and minority owned businesses in the administration. And one of the things um, now is supposed to be each corporation or business is supposed to get a diversity grade. Uh, what I've been finding in some cases is some of it has been window dressing, where some of the larger companies will try to just uh, try to appease people. Uh, try to get maybe a black contractor or two just to come and be in part of the project, uh, give them a small piece of the pie. And it just seems like um, they're, they're, there's a way of trying to circumvent that. What, what are some of the challenges that you've run into in trying to make sure that, that we can get some semblance of equality across the board? That is, is exactly that, what you said. So I remember talking to some friends of mine who are in the tech industry space out here and we got excited because, uh, you know, the at, right after Black Lives Matter, you see all these companies pledge. Yeah, we're going to give a million. Yeah, we're going to do this. Yeah, we're going to we, we stand with our brothers and sisters. It's been almost a year now. Can somebody give me the reports? I want to see receipts. 
who been doing what? What checks have been written? What programs have been developed? What 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 things have you changed in your company to make sure that we don't get more of the same old same old, right? Exactly. Have we seen that? Yes. Um, and so that's the the biggest the biggest challenge when it comes to this work. The next thing biggest challenge I would say is that people often look at it and because when we're, when we're talking about dealing with diversity, equity, and inclusion in, in institutions and companies, we're, we're, we're really, what we're really doing is we're addressing white supremacy, right? Um, and white supremacy culture. And people think that only lives in white people. And what I'm here to tell you is that that's not the case. There are black people, there are Hispanic people that take on form of whiteness and subscribe to certain whiteness culture traits, right? Um, and will feed into that, which feeds into then the system staying the way it stays that only benefits a certain group of people. Mm. Mm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. so where, do think, where do you think that comes from? Where History. do I think that comes from? History. History, bro. Mm. Yeah. Well, let, let me ask you a question. Let, I, let me, I, here's where it comes from. If you look at how this country was built right let's say those those european settlers that came over here um and dominated when when they first settled here in canada and in the u.s the first group of people that they kind of enslaved and tried to change were the indigenous people that were here right right and in one of those famous speeches he said we got to eradicate the indian and save the man and so they cut their hair off. They made them wear, you know, the clothes they wear. And then somewhere along the line, you know, those group of people felt that, you know, they they weren't they weren't at, at the same level of human being. The the humanity went out the window. Even for our people, where we're three, was was it three fifths of a man, right? Mm -hmm. Where, where we're, we're not the humanity was stripped away. Where now, since I think you're you're not. At the human level as i am and you're beneath me i i feel like you are now property i could treat you any kind of way right now when uh when i would say when we got the the free emancipation all those all the rules that came in that we thought we were free we may have won some things on paper but the south won the narrative of the story so that's why certain rules policing and laws and things were kept in place because they won the story they won the narrative mm -hmm. of how black people people of color will be continue to be treated and they started a new type of slavery which is you know prison hoods and all that stuff mm -hmm. right. good point very good point yeah. Yeah. so let me let me ask you a question so when you go in like yourself right this is might sound funny. When you go into a company mm -hmm. and you come in, you're a little dark skin man and stuff like that. Do you think the white people get more intimidated when you come into those rooms and talk about this inclusion? That they be more more acceptable to a more fair skinned brother or sister, if you know what I mean? Or a white person doing the same kind of work telling them this kind of things? Do you see that, any difference? You know, the you got a couple of light skinned people on, on, on your show. I, I'm pretty sure they get better <laughs> deals uh when they come in the room versus you know, us Doskin brothers now, I'll just tease it. <laughs> <laughs> right, sometimes, sometimes us light skinned brothers are actually blacker than some dark skinned brothers. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? All my some light people, some light skinned my... dudes are stronger fighters. Yeah, man. All my... Look, you got Farrakhan. Don't wave your head, motherfucker. That's Don't right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the, the, the old Negro slave debate, light skin you know, versus dark skin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know them all. Yeah, Adam Clayton Powell, all the motherfuckers out there, huh? Hey, yeah. listen, tell you let me ask you a question, man. So you go into an, uh, a company and you are successful, all right? Yeah. Wildly successful. What does that success look like to me, the worker? Does that just mean that I see more? Faces that look like me at the top. Does it mean that I no longer have to cold switch when I go to work? Uh, what does that mean? You know, for what does success mean? What is the difference? What does freedom or DNI look like for me as work? Yeah. So here's why I know when companies are successful. Um, and 
when we go, because uh, what companies preach now, they, they preach safe spaces, right? Uh, we got to create a safe space if we're going to do this. So we have a set of rules of how we're going to talk, how we're going to engage. Um, and what I've noticed is when we create those safe spaces, often people who need to be pushed are the same people who are very ignorant in their ways and their way of thinking. So if if John from the 15th floor be saying racist things, doesn't mean he's a racist, but he's been saying racist things, and he says, I feel uncomfortable, then we have to end the conversation there. We can't talk can't about, talk it, right? about it, right? So what needs to happen is if a company moves, it's not saying that you get rid of all safe spaces, say some safe spaces need it, but you need to create brave spaces where we can argue with civility and have discussion and where it's not just allowed for these systems and these conversations that happen uh, and nobody is able to address it, right? Um, and that really sets, uh, you know, a space for people to have honest dialogue, difficult conversations, uh, to, to be able to move the needle on the things that we need to discuss so we we won't end up in the same place we, we and repeat history where we always been. Oh, that's a, that's an excellent excellent point. I, I, I think one of the one of the issues that I've seen, and and this is being a small business owner, um, you know, I, I've always believed it's it's kind of hard to legislate morality. That's that's one of the issues. So it's it almost seems like trying to get the 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 round peg into the square hole type situation where we're trying to we're trying to legislate this, but it seems like what we do is we address the 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 flames and not actually the the cause of the fire you know did you did you get uh, you guys hear me you went out we almost address the symptoms it seems like you know what i mean this is a societal issue and so obviously it just creeps into to the corporate space i commend you um what made you walk in this path or what you know uh we have gentlemen on this show that are just as passionate uh what how did you uh wind up being in this space yeah so uh i i, I kind of got voluntold honestly <laughs> um it, it it was it the the first time around i got i got put in the space um was nobody else would would, would do it and so I always had this personality. I'm originally from the East Coast and I live out here on the West Coast. I always had this this big personality where like, you know, I'm not I'm not totally afraid to say what what I feel. Um as long as I know it's the I, it's going to be received in the right way in the in the space that I say it. And, and it's true. And, and it's true, right? Yeah, right? And and, it's true. and and I'm also a comedian. Like, you know, I grew up I grew up in the era of your mama jokes. Everybody in my family is a comedian. You have to have tough skin. So I, I usually mix my humor and my, my seriousness in a way that, you know, sometimes people feel unthreatened and they're like, wait, he just told me some truth there, right? And so people, you know, they, they, they can swallow the truth a little bit better when it comes with some comedy. Gotcha. And, and so that's how I was, you know, quote unquote, selected to be the easier to swallow, you gotcha. know, Negro versus some other person who's going to come out all fair con on them. <laughs> yeah, because um, white people like a little powder sugar on it when they when they receive it. Not, not the yeah. powder sugar. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just yeah, it's a little bit. But I wanted to ask you if you. Sugar. Yeah. <laughs> How would you um what kind of advice would you give somebody that wants to get into DNI? I think if you want to get into DNI, um, I would say one, go into different leadership programs that help you build up your tolerance to kind of address, you know, the mask you live in because people people are gonna come for you, right? Mm -hmm. And they're gonna they gonna they're gonna pull out all your skeletons like like you you Drake versus uh push a T. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> and if you ain't dealt with some stuff, you're gonna look silly up there trying to deal with some stuff while you're trying to help people. In other words, um, you can't have thin skin. You can't have thin skin, and you 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 need to be able to say, "Hey, you know what? Th that that's something that I'm addressing. That's something that I'm still working through." You got to be able to be a little bit vulnerable because 
people people don't want it if you're not if you're not willing to be vulnerable then why should i be vulnerable with you to, to talk about these tough tough mm-hmm. issues so you can't have no love child by a stripper i'm trying to say you could, but you be you just have to be ready to talk about it. You said, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, yeah. So uh, I think we had a question. I think Lisa made a good comment up there in there a minute ago. Jamie, can you bring it back up real quick? Yeah, dialogue, listen to hear, not to respond. Mm-hmm. You know, is that that sounds like fi- sound advice just in general. I kind of you have two ears and one mouth for a reason, you know? And um I think that that's probably half the, the battle just me of course not really knowing what it all what what what, what goes into it but I, I think that um if it's about learning what one another is dealing with and the sharing experiences man it's gotta at least start with that you know um what are people what are what are the conversations what are some of the deepest conversations that you've had that you or dialogues um that you can kind of impart with us you know um something 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 heavy something that may that, that made you just say hmm back in the days or some you know some sort of um revelation that you um that you didn't necessarily have going into it and please don't say any company's name yeah right <laughs> <laughs> you're not messing up my chat you're not messing up my chat. <laughs> uh uh before i jump into that to go back to that young lady's comment it's so important because what i what i often tell people to do is listen to understand and listen with an open heart and open mind because um sometimes what we do uh there's two things that happen like if it, if you're in a leadership position or you, you own a company you're you're listening to risk mitigate and so you're listening to respond and and, and what i mean by that is like think about the time when, you, when your wife is telling you something and you're trying to think of the response to give her because, you know, like I'll give you an example. When I came in the, uh, one day and, you know, my wife was mad at me because I didn't do the dishes uh, and I said I was going to do the dishes, right? And I'm like, I just came from a hard day at work and she wanted to get on me about these positions. So I'm up here thinking about how I'm going to respond, uh, how I'm going to respond to what she's saying and give her the reason why, but not really listening to understand the reason why she really frustrated is because I, I I consistently did something and made a promise that was not keeping to her, right? It wasn't really about the dishes at this time. It was about the behaviors that led up to this this thing that, that blew up to what it is right now. And so I, I urge people to listen, to understand, but get the risk mitigation and not respond. And you can truly hear what the other person is trying to say. And you can read in between the lines of what's not being said. Um, now to going to answer your question, the, I think the, the most, um, courageous thing that I had to do was be vulnerable because my, my wife is Chinese and we have a mixed daughter and during, uh, this past year, during the pandemic, we both experienced discrimination from two different lens one from you know the black lives matter one from you know the asian hate and uh my daughter who was only three at the time experienced something and i had to have a discussion with her that i didn't think i was going to have to have at three i wasn't ready to have that discussion at three and it's the discussion that all black parents feel and then i I had to be vulnerable at my my work to tell them why I'm, I'm not in the right mindset right now because here's what I'm going through. And so no, I can't help you with your DNF efforts right now because I'm going through some things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Point. Very good point. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like sometimes the the, 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 the stoppages, the things that we have going on in our, in our own lives can, can be stoppages. Um, and then you going back to what you said before, um, when we we're talking about like listening to respond, you could see that just on a macro level in our relationships, you know, between let's say minorities and the, the, the greater um, society, so to speak, or the, you know, the majority society, you know, where they listen to respond, you know what I mean? There, there's a, con- a consistent um, um, evaluation or not understanding of a point of view and they've gotten to a point it feels like you know they're kind of shutting down and like okay i heard the argument you, see, you always say this you always say this make it heard the, the story but it's just kind of they always listen to respond now you know what i mean to to, 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 to explain away 
um, you know, the, the consistent behavior, you know, so how do you overcome that sort of thing, you know, um, is, 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 I guess, one of the things that we kind of, that I wonder, you know, about like how do you get them to, let's say, I, I'm assuming, like, you may go into a company um, that is, like, let's just say it's predominantly white, you know, you can look, of course, <clears throat> the, the executive, you know, on the executive level and see all of these people, you know, how do you get them to understand uh, a different point of view or just, you know, even if it's just, you know, someone who works uh, with a middle manager, you know what I mean? Um, I, you long, know, just, yeah, I love that. A long story short, Derek is saying, how you saying you crackers don't get it? <laughs> <laughs> see, D, I'm trying to you go against Yo, we, we only got a two hour show. You, heard yeah. <laughs> you, you crackers just don't get it. How you how you going to say that, brother? Oh um, man. <laughs> um, so I, I it's it's a it's a four level approach. Like usually I take them through their their uh how they're built as a coach uh going back to them as a culturally diverse person to see, you know, their cultural programming of what makes them them, right? So example for me, right? The I I grew up in Washington, D.C. I grew up during a time where it was the murder capital, grew up in the hood. Some of my cultural programming is, you know, snitches get stitches. For, the, for those who can't relate, that means don't tattletale. Um, uh, for, for any of your white listeners, if you have any. Uh, and, and so when I came over to a corporate environment and started working in HR, there's like, hey, if you see if you see something, say something. I'm like, oh, hell nah. Like, I, I don't care what Jim doing over there. That's none of my business. Right. And, and then going to understand how your cultural programming, whether it be, you know, my grandparents from the south, respect your elders. Right. How that informs how you maneuver and how you interact uh, with society. Then there's another um, aspect of it where, you know, just to simply put it uh, without going through the whole context of it, there's that old golden rule, right? You guys remember, what's the golden rule? He who has the gold makes, makes the rule. The rule. Uh, oh, well, that's one. I'll, 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 I'll <laughs> you that's, that's, <laughs> but that's the rule. The one from the Bible. That is the golden rule. <laughs> <laughs> that is the golden rule. I'll talk about the golden rule from the Bible. Like, do unto others. Oh, okay, hey, gotcha. Well, well, yeah, well, I'm, 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 I'm a senator. You're the wrong brother asking <laughs> I don't do none of that. I don't listen to none of that shit. Man. So, uh, treat others the way you want to be treated. And I, when yeah, I usually yeah, yeah. go in and I, I reprogram that and say, hey, we, we're not doing the golden rule no more. We're doing the platinum rule. And the platinum rule is treat others the way they want to be treated, right? Because I may not want to be treated the way you want to be treated. And then if you if you can understand that concept and still and get to know people to see how they like to be treated with, how they like to be communicated with, see what their understanding of their culture is, whether it be notions of time, respect, family, what's important to them, and then communicate from that level, then you can have a more honest dialogue and, and meet people where they're at. So my brother, man, where can people find you at, man? They want to book you, talk about your podcast, what time to come on, where's that platform at, and all that stuff, man. Well, right now you can find me on Rise Urban Nation on all platforms streaming. If you want to book me, you, uh, go ahead and uh, hit me up on LinkedIn. I'm on there too, Terrell, T-A-R-Y-E-L-L, Simmons, uh, all platforms, and we can chop it up. That's what I'm talking about, Terrell. <laughs> Show that shirt off one more time, brother, man. We appreciate you, brother, man, and all the work you do, man. Like I said, we he's making sure that all the promises were made, they're going to be kept. Because there's exactly. a lot, there was a lot of promises out there from the NFL. We know how they even got down to all of these all going deodorant companies and all of this diversity stuff they were talking. And I haven't seen nobody do this shit. Don't talk about goddamn secret. Are these they about the I was coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm listen, coming. Listen, Terrell, I like wearing ladies' deodorant. So they got we got to have a diversity and inclusion uh, person to come in and talk about let's chop it up, how they treat me about my feminine product. Hey, yeah. strong enough for a man, but made for a woman. That's damn right. Yeah. That's damn right. That's very right. Yeah. All right, my brother from another mother. Thanks for coming on, man, for chopping up with us, man. Peace, peace, and peace to you, brother. Thanks, Take care, man. brother. Appreciate right. you. Right, right. So, so oh, D, you just gonna double down on that deodorant stuff, huh? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, put me back on top. Like, right, right, yeah, there we go. Oh, mix yeah. it back up. Put Derek back. There we go. There we go. There we go, Jamie. There we go. Oh, there we go, Jamie. Yeah, man. So, and yeah, there be two dark skinned brothers up top, right? We always got to be, got to keep one of us down. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. That was, good. that was a good conversation, man, with our brother there, man. Like, a lot of people promised him, man. I, I hope they deliver because a lot of companies, they, they sometimes they just uh, like to promote us to middle management. Keep it there. Yeah, yeah. you're not gonna just deliver. You got to make people deliver. That's just the bottom line. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, like yeah, the platitudes out there. You know, it's good to see them out there, just trying to make it happen, man. For us, yeah, man. man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So you know, we we less chop it up. We like the barbershop talk. So now we got to get into a little bit of sports. So this is gonna be so. Maya uh, was a shocker. Makes the history of the first black female official officiate uh, officiate an NFL game. She's officiated the games between the Jets and the Carolina Panthers. And we know the outcome of that. She couldn't even cheat for the brothers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jets still lost. That got sister right there. Yo, you see that look on her face? She say, damn, the Jets suck. <laughs> <laughs> Bless I think the sister went to a historical black college, too, university, man. I believe oh, that's so. what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So shout out yeah. to her, man. I think in the daytime, I think she's a teacher or something like that. That's okay. a that's a great job. Yeah. They they, yeah. they depending on how long they in the league, they get pensions and all that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they fly them out. I, mean, I was working um when I first started my job in now, it was a middle school. The the phys ed teacher, I think he's a fly out on Fridays after work to mm -hmm. do, do the NFL games somewhere and then and be back on uh Monday morning. So. First of all, I gotta commend her because that's 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 tremendous. That is that is a tremendous. Uh, forget that Panther Nation, my goddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta start muting her ass. But go ahead, man. <laughs> She's a groundbreaker in that, and that's great. Um, I was an official for about twenty minutes uh, with a three on three <laughs> basketball tournament, and I'm gonna tell you something. I commend anybody as an official. They got on me so bad, I got my car and left. I told my <laughs> <laughs> Being official is no joke, but on that level, that's amazing. That's, that's right, that's black girl magic, yeah. right? Now. Yeah, black girl. Hey, man. Yeah. It's good to see the you only, thing. Yeah, it's the only thing I can say. It, it took too long. It should have happened sooner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. but you know, yeah. I think that's, I think that's good because I think uh, they've been trying for, and, and it seems it's, it's succeeding. Just you know, uh, I remember when they were trying to get more female viewership for the NFL. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, to do that, you have to have a more feminine presence. So, um, it's good to see. Uh, feminine coach, you know, female women coaches, uh, and, and, and women referees, man. It just you know, I'd be interested to see what her perspective is on, um, on you know, what she sees, you know, so on uh, what kind you know, if there's a, if there's a different perspective. You Do know? you think you'll see a, a female football coach, professional football coach? Well, we got, I think so they, they are, they, they, yeah, they, they are, they are, they have not, not a head coach, but they have coaches, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Just, it's just I'm trying to, I'm trying to yeah. figure out which team. I, mean, um, I know it's. I wonder for some reason I'm thinking the Browns in my head, but I might be. Mm, I can't I think, but there is a female coach. The defense, defense, yeah. of, the defense coach, right? The defense yeah, coach. I think it's defense. It's a defensive coach. Right. Or something. Yeah, yeah. somebody. It's a coordinator somewhere. I can't. Damn, man, we should have looked that up before we got on. Well, maybe Jamie can find it. We we'll, we we'll talk about it. Yeah, we will bring it up, Jamie. While we doing the sports segment, if you can find that real quick for us. That'd be great, my brother. So, Ben Wallace, Virginia Union's own former NBA player. Pays tribute to being in the Hall of Fame to the Black Panthers while he's getting his Hall of Fame induction. Any thoughts, gentlemen? First of all, I thought that was Frederick Douglass, first of all. I'm just going to say. I thought it happened. What the hell, man? I was like, no, no, I, I think it's commendable. Um, just as Reggie Douglas would have done. No, I think it was really, really commendable um, to do that because I think it's bigger than him. And realistically, all the fame and accolades is really what you do in the service of other people that really matters, you know. And so I think uh, it's always great, especially for today's athlete, to see that that people before them have sacrificed for other people. And so when a brother is trying to do that, I think it's a great cause, though, to see that. Even I mean, it's commendable to make it from Virginia Union University to society. Then to actually become a Hall of Famer, that's amazing. And then to actually sacrifice other people, that's that's a good look. So congratulations to Ben Wallace. And uh, hopefully Ron Artest um, will be there to support it, you know, after they squash their beef from the malice at the palace. But no, that's, that's definitely commendable to the brother. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the Virginia Union zone, baby. Rebound yeah. King, right? Just want to make yeah. sure, man. Tell I, me, were I, you at Virginia Union when he was there? Nah, you know what? I think he came after me. 
Okay. Um, but but I came after Charles Oakley and I think AJ English. Mm. So Virginia Union has produced um, produced some some NBA players from a Division two school. Okay. And, it, it, and, it, and it, it, anybody out there lets you know that you don't necessarily need money or books or anything to to make it big. So hard work always uh, I'm, works out. I'm surprised they produce more boxes and wrestlers for Virginia Union. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, you about to say something? I'm sorry to cut you off. Are you about to say something, man? Nah, I just was saying I didn't recognize um, Ben Wallace either because I didn't have his headband on and um and that big old afro, so I didn't recognize. Him. <laughs> I but I like the way he was dressing. He he looked like you know he looked like he from some of the Nation of Islam a little bit there, you know, looking strong. But you know, I commend the brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I just, uh, I just yeah, I just saw where he's from, um, Loudness, Loudness County, or something like that. White Hall or whatever. White Hall, I guess the connection. I was trying to figure out what the white, where the Black Panther connection was, um, because I couldn't see it, you know. But um, I, I think that's the birthplace of Black Panther. I just saw. It. Yeah. So maybe that's it. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, man. So uh, Jamie, producer Jamie tells us twelve in NFL. I mean, twelve females in NFL as coaches right now. So we we don't have to list the teams, but just want to let people know they are. We are making strides and changes. I think yeah, and I think baseball has a you know, general manager and uh, Asian lady has the general manager for the Florida Marlins. Yes, yes, mm. right, yeah. So uh, with that further ado, speaking since we are on the topic of basketball, what's a Westbrook get cutty with skirts for New York Fashion Week? Lord have mercy. Jesus Christ. Jesus fucking Christ. Anyhow, I leave my my thoughts, but Yo. I think. Go ahead, Ronnie. Go ahead. I'm going to let you He's looking like Lady Diana in that um in that picture. I mean, like, what the hell is going on with these guys with this dress? Coach, thank you. Right. Yeah, it, it's just insane to me. Like, like, did he get a big check for something like that? Because, I mean, for me to put on a dress, you got to give me a hell of a check. I don't give a fuck if you give me a hell of a check. I'm not destroying my No, 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 no. Don't say that because if they cut you a big enough one, you probably put one on. Like, you know, you know my millions. If they so cut me in the millions, I might have to think. I'm probably going to have to think about it. It's only temporary. I'll, that would be my attitude. I'll change it. It's only no, temporary. No, no. All right. Look, look. I'm going to be honest with you. D, we done let the deodorant go. You put yeah, the yeah, yeah. on. I'm telling you it's a wrap. <laughs> Come on, man. I'll be, look, I have my feminine balance and the underarms. I'm going to tell you what it is. I think it is, it is, it is this kind of anti-masculinity agenda. Yeah, That's what it just yeah, feels yeah. like. It just really, yeah, yeah. it really feels like it's almost this idea of uh, some type of submission or something. It's, it's, it, it's almost like it's, it's, it seems like some type of form of control in some way. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I look at the NBA players, the way they dress their fashion and fashion has, has, has really slowly been moving to that. Yeah. Moving to that extreme, like it's almost masculinity has become a bad word over the last two decades. It really Correct. has, like it's a negative Correct. thing to be masculine. Correct. Correct. You know what I'm saying? And I, I don't, I don't, you know, get that. Yeah, I agree, Kelvin. I think that basically it is a demasculation campaign going on, a serious one, and it's definitely attacking black men. But I think it's like it's like trying to trying to take our strength away. They don't want us looking strong. You know what I'm saying? That's how I kind of see it. You know, so the to, to the 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 way to take your strength away is to make you look feminine. You know what I mean? So yeah, but I, I, agree, I, I agree with Ron because think about this: Russell Westbrook is one of the bad asses dude that we know in the NBA, right? Yeah, he's correct. One of the most masculine dude convince him to wear a damn dress or a skirt, whatever you want to call the damn thing, on there. That, what is that really? What's the message behind that? Not yeah. that you can be different. You can be different doing a whole bunch of shit. Dennis Rodman well had him and he was skirt too. But well, you know, nobody but, was more. Nobody was more different than Cam Newton too. He was doing some crazy. Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. But he's out. Yeah, fuck Cam Newton. But I want to know how, how they <laughs> explain that. How does he explain that to his wife? How does Russell, Russell Rest, Westbrook but, sit but, down? Yeah, that's why nothing to get that he got that check, man. That's yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you said that. It's black women, the gatekeepers of this feminine movement. When they now they go now they're screaming out, there's no real men. But you're yeah. the gatekeepers of this kind of look. Yeah. They love it. Yeah. Like look at the oh girl, he got his purse. Now we see young men all going to party. The other party was like ten young men. They all but, have fucking purses. Going to the bathroom with your purse. Yeah. 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 Seriously, <laughs> I ain't never, I have never seen I, that, man. But that, 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 you that, that, they have them all on every time. Going to the bathroom yeah. with them shit. Derek, I get your point. And let's say you you just made. $20 million, you do a photo shoot with a skirt on, what's your wife going to say? 
Not saying you made the money from there. I'm saying that you, let's say you just, you got that check. You're just a millionaire, whatever. What does your wife do say before those pictures are released? Bro, I don't even know. I'm, I'm, calling, I'm calling the guys from Let's Chop It Up to take me out on a man's masculine date. <laughs> <laughs> she probably said, give me half, give me my half, man, so I can find me a real dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know, man. That's an alien mentality to me, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just hard for me to grasp and D, what you're talking about, about, you know, these young guys wearing purses and such and bring them to the bathroom, like, that's just hard for me to get, man. You that's know what I mean? They always do it. They always do it through sports and music. They always yeah, do it. It's a psychological yeah. apparition on a massive, on a massive scale, man. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it's the old quote unquote Willie Lynch syndrome type deal. You know what I mean? You just take, you know, your most, you know, alpha, what would normally be your most alpha, and you just break them down and, 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 and you know, do the switch rule on them or whatever, man. It's it gangs delicious and thugnificent. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's, Yo, it's, you're right, but the thing about this, man, you only see it in the two most dominant sports of bro, 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 brothers uh, of color is basketball and the NBA. You don't see this in baseball. No. You never see it in baseball. You don't see this in no. boxing. No. You see it in those two fucking arenas where they have they, in, in those arenas all the time. Especially in NFL and the NFL, they go they can always they could like you said before, money and they can control by money because their contracts are guaranteed. Mm. No. Exactly. You know so it's, 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 uh, soon, soon soon men and women gonna be shopping in the same department. You can be at right, Wichita's right. close. You remember the same drawers, right? Yeah, you know. Use yeah, the right. sex underwear. Watch, that's coming next, man. Yeah. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Well, I, I'm only wearing deodorant feminine and using women shaving cream. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> that's all I'm doing. I'm not doing. I'm, that's the problem. I'm going about the shaving cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, women shaving cream, baby. D, you ain't got the pink razor, do you? No, 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 no. I okay. still got masculine. I still got masculine razors, but the shaving cream <laughs> just got a nice uh, smooth to your head and, and skin and stuff like that. Feel like <laughs> make my skin feel like Gary Coleman. So, <laughs> 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 Yo, oh man. Listen, man. I, here we go, Derek. I'm not. I'm not trying to poke the bear, but holy film versus Bill uh, Ford last, yeah. last week. Oh, okay, let's let's start off I'm, like this. Go ahead, right? Ron. You take it from here, bro. You I'm gonna it. start I, off I, like I'm this. I'm not saying shit. Yeah, yeah, we're not picking on Derek, but Derek is getting harder and harder to defend this thing. We they basically sanctioned a 58 year old man to get in the ring and box, and they did wrong for that. Yeah, dead, dead, absolutely. Dead, dead ass wrong for that. Whoever did that is dead ass wrong, bro. Like, yeah, and like, like I felt, I felt, the athletic commission is dead ass wrong. Man. I felt, yeah. I felt so bad. Now I, I didn't pay for the fight because I, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to support nothing like that. But yeah. I did see the fight, like on YouTube or what have you. But or, or the, illegal fire stick. <clears throat> no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I didn't, I didn't watch it. I watched it after the fight. And the thing is, like, I felt, I felt like, like bad for Holyfield. Like, I'm looking at him, like, me, you like, you need the money, like, you know, it just, it, it, it just didn't look good. That's, that's not something as a sports fan or a boxing fan that I would want to see. I don't want to see Evander Holyfield get hurt. I used to see Evander Holyfield as one of the toughest fighters in his era. This is the man. This is the man that took down. Took down Mike Tyson, and we had a remember we had a conversation. We had a kind of a little thing. You thought that if they fought right now, Hollyfield would take my. Would well, take I did. Tyson. I'm going to take that back now. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to take it back. Uh, you're right. <laughs> see, see, Derek, I'm admitting that I'm wrong. You got to practice that. <laughs> but the thing is, but the thing is, I take it back. I don't think he can beat Mike Tyson now. There is a big age difference, and basically, Holyfield has hit the wall. I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to see Holyfield get hurt. Now, bro, he's great. He's that's shredded, great. but you know that little thing inside. Yeah, it's in great skin. Yeah. It's bro, gone. My, that's, yeah, it's gone. His mind, the his mind, mind is, reacts. It's not reacting to that. Yeah, Correct. Exactly. The, what happens? What happens with fighters? The brain gets stronger than the body. So they, their brain is telling them, "Yeah, I can still fight. I can still do this." But the body's not responding. Did yeah. we not two weeks ago have a discussion on when should your favorite entertainer exit? You're right. And that's what I'm saying. In this case, someone else told him. The lefts and the rights told him. But if you just listen to what's chop it up, I was trying to tell you, leave before they ask you to leave. Yeah. Everybody has a season. When your season is over, you can't extend it. 
Yeah, that happens. Wind up with a speed knot. That happens all the time. It, it, it interferes with your legacy. Oh man, yeah, yeah. 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 It happens all the time. Boxing, man. Rodney said it best. Holyfield needed money. I think he did that show with uh, X, X Sports Space with A Rod in it last long. A Rod was trying to teach him how to get money and and how to. He, you know, he got a son in the NFL now, right? Well, manage him and figure it out. Holy still has a lot of kids. Yeah, he does. He might, have, he might have an NFL team. He had a compound, bro. <laughs> he was that tight, man. He had all those baby mamas and whatnot. And his yeah. little and whatnot with all those kids, man, on the compound. Man. Yeah, so, I think yeah, so. I think Holyfield got more kids than me. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he probably does. I think he does. He got. Yeah, Jamie can find out how many kids this motherfucker has. He got kids, man. That kept, that, Ali, that kept Ali in the ring too long. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, boxing does that, bro. Boxing is the one sport, man, that it that is so. You, you know, boxing retires you, man. You know what I mean? You, people don't retire from boxing. Boxing retires you. That's deep. That's you know? deep. That's deep. That's deep. Yeah, it happens all the time. But he yeah. should just go into, like, you know, the, the thing with Holyfield, like, he would, if he had a personality, he could have went to wrestling. Like, like Mike Tyson didn't do his podcast and, all, and do the movies. Mike Tyson easily could have went into wrestling because he's a, he's, a, he's a character. Oh, yeah. Okay. Easy. Okay. Let's, you know, I, I think a little different. Why hasn't Holyfield sold his story? Like, why hasn't there been a movie made about Holyfield, some sort of book, documentaries? He could have made his money that way. Why did he get back in the ring? He's boring. He, listen, man. He has no I mean, I mean, you got to realize Holyfield has no personality. He's not prolific. He does not. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying right. to help. Hey, hey, help brother, the guy out. Let's stop it up. Hey, right there. How you doing? <laughs> like, Nobody want to hear that shit. Nobody want to hear that shit. Oh, man, the unsung. Like, I used to box with my hand. Like, no story. I fuck a lot. I got a lot of kids. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear that shit. No, I mean, I mean his. His boxing story, that is a story to still be told. I mean, this man was a I heavyweight, was a small heavyweight, and he and he actually was able to capture the heavyweight championship a couple of times. But you know what? I'm gonna tell you honestly. <laughs> Yo, y'all gotta get off my man holy face. Okay, no, but, 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 but to be honest with you, I don't know if you remember early on in his career, he was kind of like a light heavyweight. Right, he was a cruiserweight. He was a cruiserweight. I don't think across the board Holyfield's ever been beloved. I think he was respected. I think Tyson was beloved. I think Ali was beloved. I, I think I think he reminds me of Holmes. He was a yeah, champion, Holmes. Yeah. but he was never. I, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there you go. I, I'm going to tell you why Holyfield wasn't grabbed by the public. First of all, number one, he was a boxer that basically was religious and he didn't talk too much. Yep. That's what killed. They, people want to hear people tra talk trash. And he never did that with his opponents. He was quiet and he basically oh, said, I ain't afraid. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to show him what I'm going to do. And that would be the end of his story. That's yeah. how he was. That wasn't exciting for people. Yeah. And when Holyfield knocks you out, he hits you with three or four or five punches and then he puts you down. It wasn't like a one punch knockout guy, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. why. But the thing is, he probably was the most fearless heavyweight there probably was. He was I'll afraid say, of no one. I'll yeah. say this, though. A lot of them kind of got big when Mike's trouble started. So if you look at Riddick Bo, you mm -hmm. look at Holyfield, or even Lennox Lewis, when Tyson went to jail and Tyson wasn't himself, and then a lot of them emerged. Tyson used to keep that division clean. He used to keep three free belts around him. He used yeah, to, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, but once he got in trouble, then all of a sudden, everybody else, it was it was parody. But before yeah, yeah. that, Mike Tyson, you know what I'm saying? And if it wasn't for the lack of discipline and Buster Douglas and all that stuff like that, we don't know how long his run could have been. You know what I mean? Just on intimidation alone, let alone mm -hmm. the power and the speed. But um, I, don't, I, I don't really care for Holyfield to really see him in any other genre. I just really don't, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Unless they're yeah. He, I, mean, he he I, I, I feel, I feel you, I feel you, Kelvin. Like I said, he just wasn't exciting. I mean, exciting in the ring, but like lifestyle, yeah. no. You know, so he was exciting in the bedroom. <laughs> that motherfucker got twelve kids. Yeah, twelve he kids, got, man. Wow. <laughs> so but, I knew he had a lot. I knew he had a lot. But, yeah, man. You know, 
and, and we're gonna move into a little bit of entertainment since we are let's chop up and we talk about that in the barbershop i thought Ari Lennox shuts down shuts down light skin privileged claims against Chloe Bell. Uh, Chloe Bell, that's my my crush on my head. They know she got a young, but you know, large mama said half women, half your age plus seven. Chloe Bell from Gronish. She had a, she was, did a great performance and stuff like that the other night on the VMAs, and she had she did the, one of the best busting challenges during 2020. She got me feeling good about myself again. With her <laughs> so thoughts, gentlemen. Mm. I. See, I'm a sound foul. I'm a sound foul. I come from, I guess, we came, we grew up in an era where there was superstars and stars. These people just popular. Like, it's just, it's, it's something where it is almost so much traffic and noise online that it's just this glorified popularity contest. And so all of this stuff just, it seems like the lines just bleed together. It bleed, it borders does pe- do people really care about this stuff? Because today's entertainer just doesn't seem any different or more special than anybody else. It just always seems to be something deleterious that that seems to be toxic. That's what it. That's what it feels like. It's not. Remember when there was a thing where where people used to um, there was glamour with Hollywood. There was you know the big you know award shows, red carpets. Now. This looks like 125th Street, Jamaica Avenue, and somebody beefing. That's what it looks like. And I know it sounds foul, but it just yeah. does. Yo, did you hear that Kelvin dropped the word deleterious? That was a five dollar <laughs> word. Yo, <laughs> no, that was a fifteen dollar word. <laughs> you know, I, I got that fifteen. Yo, that. Yeah. you get mad points for that shit in Scrabble. <laughs> If you were playing Scrabble, you would have killed us with that. Well, first of all, most of us don't even know what it means. <laughs> I just said it and said, hope these motherfuckers know what he's talking was, about. As soon as he said it, I was like, oh, shit. That was Terry. <laughs> Terry is other bitch. Get with nah. it. Yeah. No, it's so funny. It's going to be a football player named Del Terry soon. <laughs> Del Terry and Jackson. Del Terry. Terry like four sacks last night. Del Terry. Yeah. Yeah, either a football player or a pimp. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. I told you before, I know a pimp named Cashmere, right? No, let's not talk about that. All right, I just want to tell you, that's long time, yeah. long time. Long time. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable, oh, yo! But good word, Kelvin. Good word, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yo, that's like that's like Walt Clyde Frazier dropping serendipity. Yo, <laughs> you know his restaurant? They said didn't survive the pandemic. It's oh, it's gone. Yeah, I just saw the yeah, headline. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, it had a basketball court in there too. I've been, been a few times. This is like I, only, I was there once. Was it true that the, the ceiling? Did you and I went together? No, we didn't go together. No. Is it true that the ceiling reflects all of his wardrobe? Yep. And his... Yep. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, at least a bunch a nice of beers and stuff would be all right now. And um, you, know. you know, I'll be honest with you. I thought it was in a bad place. Because like it was on what Ninth Avenue, like close to the West Side Highway, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like to me, it seemed like, you know, just it was like you know off the beaten path. You know, I didn't know if today's sports fan connected with it. it. When I went, it wasn't even full. You know, I, I even yeah, got I like no, he's a star from yesteryear that they didn't see play. Yeah, and yeah. Um, even though he's the greatest uh, point guard in Nick history, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just Watch don't it. think I don't think it connected. Yeah. 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 So, you know, we're going back to Chloe, man. Um, that her friend, that her friends that defended her, that Chloe, with her, a fan, a fans defended her and try and try to start to stop about the beef. So that's how the whole nice thing started with that. But you know, shout out to the sister, shout out to the, what, her, what she's doing and everything. We love her music. Yeah, I just, I just don't like that. Like a lot of um, artists, they're not based on talent anymore. It's basic. It's based on what kind of shit you can stir. You know what I'm saying? And that's like. Like Calvin said, like back in our days, like some of these people wouldn't be stars today because a lot of them were not that talented. It was already right. look, let's look at, you know, talent. none of the Kardashians would have jobs. Like, like, you know, who are they? What do they do? You know, what I mean, none of them have a, a a a talent other than being Kardashians. And you know, but you know, you know what? The, you know the thing that's even worse than that, Derek, to me, is it's not just them. It's the actual amount of people they've influenced to try to take the same road. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, right. if you remember, Lawrence Fishburne's daughter became a porn star. Right. She said she did that because 
She wanted to be Kardashian and got famous with her. Mm -hmm. So and then she then she break, realized break, she was black. Yes. But here's yeah. the thing, break that apart. Your Lawrence Fishburne's daughter. You can't yeah. get a reading somewhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm right. saying? You just put in some work. I think they but had a strange it, relationship to them too. I think they had a strange yeah. relationship. Still, man, but, she'd have done anything, man. You know what I mean? You can't tell me. She could they, they had no relationship. Her last her last name alone would have got her well, readings. You know yeah, what I mean? If, 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 relationship. If he blocks her, but also porn is acting. <laughs> For my research. <laughs> well, back back to the Kardashians. Basically, Kim got famous from a sex tape, which yeah. I, that, I don't know how you get famous from a sex tape and then go into the mainstream entertainment. That's that's amazing to me. She failed up. She had a different kind of skin. Yeah, she failed yeah. up. She fell up the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then the thing is, nobody in her family did. I well, you got to give them credit for amazing marketing. How this family was able to market themselves and become famous, but to be famous from not doing anything—that's just amazing to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's a certain point where you have to live with yourself. She says she's gonna have to one day tell her, her daughter. I used to say her kids don't need to be in the cafeteria in junior high. Mm. Just don't say nothing. Don't <laughs> say okay. Well, I don't think I don't think she's gonna have to tell them anything. It's gonna be on the bathroom wall. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like you know, when your mom's is with in, at <laughs> <laughs> Oh Joey, that was funny, man. That was funny. Did, did you use yeah. the right color? Good lord. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Except Kylie's a businesswoman, like she was smart for getting into cosmetics business but like like you said that's the, she's the pimp named cashmere that's, yeah. what, that's, <laughs> what, that's what that's what the mother is the because mother the, is the pimp the mother she met is. the the mother was a stewardess and met the father on a flight is that correct oh i didn't know that part. I, 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 have think, no idea. I don't follow the motherfuckers i think that's i think that's how the mother met the father the kardashian father because that's the name is from the father the right. father passed away but yeah. i'm pretty sure she was a, a former stewardess and basically, she married up. She married him. He was an attorney, yeah, and then basically just took off from there. And then she basically became everybody's manager, I guess. But, she worked her way, man. She got yeah. the way and worked it, man. Yeah. So yeah. one of the more entertainment topics, man. What brothers love to talk about in, in the barbershop the most. Hip hop. We had a good. We had a versus last night. One of the better ones I heard. Last, I missed. I was in and out of it because I had a lot of phone calls last night. Fat Joe versus Ja Rule at Madison Square Garden. Even though they was trying to act like they was, they was they very friendly with each other. And I don't know if you guys saw it. What are your thoughts on the verses? And and to me, Ja Rule won the night. Ja Rule has bigger records. What do you guys thought? I didn't, well, I didn't see. I just saw clips, so I, I can't really. Yeah, I, I saw same thing with me. I saw clips. Um, I would say that Ja Rule probably definitely has the bigger catalog than Fat Joe. Um, but you're right. It was very. It was a friendly competition. Um, they've been friends for a very long time. So it was basically them just having a good time on the stage. That's how I saw it. You know, yeah. and Fifty Cent was trolling. He oh, he's trolling. Oh, that's what he, he does. Trolling. Yeah, he said he's going. He said Ja Rule better be quiet. Or somebody said something. No, Irv Gotti said something, and he said I'll be quiet before I buy your record label. <laughs> I, think, you know, I have to say it's enough already. I really think it, it's really enough already. I mean, it's they're gonna be old men talking about Fifty and Ja Rule. Let it go. You you want it, and that was it. You know what I'm saying? And it's, and not, it's not going away. They're not. No, that 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 that, that, bro, that Kelvin that's, that beef is not that's going away because yeah, it's a lot like, deeper it's, than it's like he needs. He, like in other words, Ja Rule has has Ja Rule doesn't mention him. He just has to keep this thing going though. Yeah. But know, it's and, it's a it's a lot there that um, yeah, there's big street beef with that. Yeah, so stuff. that the, the beef was it was for real. Like we talking about some stabbings and all kind of stuff and people you, you trying to take saying? people's lives and stuff like that. So it was yeah, very yeah, yeah. it was serious. It's like it got bigger than it, it got bigger than fifty. I think it became its own thing. I think you know, yeah. and in you know, fifty, just being who he is, he's like, I can't stand fifty. He's saying he's yeah, he doesn't even stay relevant. I don't know. Yeah, that was his biggest rival, and that's when he had the most success. What I'm saying is, right now, if somebody is 20 years old, I don't know that they care about 50 Cent. I don't know if they care about Get Rich or Die Trying. I don't know if they care about 03 that you was on fire. Yeah. Realistically, yeah. like you said, he has to do whatever to stay relevant. That's well, I, think, I, think, you know, I think 50 is relevant. First of all, last night they had a lot of guest appearance. I'm going to say Shanti, Remy Ma came out last night. Mm. It was dope. But I think 50 had to stay, he's staying relevant. The kids that's young, like you said, that's a good point. 
thing through his TV show production, mm-hmm. like, like Raising Kane in the Power series. Mm-hmm. Um, the BMF shit's gonna very be super large. Correct. That, that part BMF. of that to me, part of that says because you weren't really that great of a rapper. I mean, realistically, every project got worse. Every project got worse. Never lyrical. We've had guests on the show. Never been in anybody's top. Five or ten. Oh, no, not lyricists, never. But his first album, no, none of us right. got the first album. Nobody could top that first album. I mean, it was, the, it was probably the... He made good songs. Right. songs. Yeah, yeah. He's got a great catalog. Right. How, much great, how much of that is Dre? How much of that is Dre? How much of that is the, how much of that is the Dre influence? No, but he also he had know. a lot of features, too, that he could be featured on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. I'm just saying, like, in other words, to me, with the TV shows and stuff like that, is because he got famous late. Whereas mm. Nas got in the game when he was like 17 or 19. LL got in when he was 17. Jay even got in late. And Jay was kept did all this through lyricism. 50 to me had a great story. He got shot nine times. He came out with a classic album out the gate. To me, that's what it was. Then he got a bunch of money. I think he's one of the smartest rappers in history. But mm. realistically, I, I just think at the end of the day, this whole thing about the constant uh, trolling and beefing and stuff, that's what he's known as now. It's almost like a character for the media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it seems like. Yeah, yeah. but that, that beef with them, that's, that beef is going to be like the Hatfields and McCoys. That's not going to go away. It's never going to go away. I know. Know. What's gonna go away to me is my interest in it, but but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, brothers, we had that final hour, man. That was funny, man. That last comment, man. But listen, people, follow us, like us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Ring that bell, please. Tell the friend to tell a friend to get us to that five. Uh, doing it right, guys. Five hundred mark. No, no, I'm doing it right. You just now. need one hand, just one, one hand. One hand, five. Yeah. Yeah. 500, 500 subscribers, man. We right there. We love it. The support. Please make comments. We always get back to you in the comments. Love you guys. Love you, brothers. Catch you next week. Peace, peace, and peace. Peace, y'all.